Sports. We are Baltimore. We are San Diego. Oh, my Friday night in San Diego. Baseball night at Petco Park. Game two of the four-game series, the Dodgers and the Padres. What a game last night. Rallying from 7-4 down. Norris with an RBI double, 7-5. Jan Salarte, a monster home run. Upper, upper deck, 7-6. And Jerko, a two-run shot. And the Padres overcome that 7-4 deficit and go on to win it 10-7. One of the most exciting ball games of the entire year. That was a great game, and hopefully they can keep that momentum going tonight. Mark Sweeney sitting in for Mark Grant after his, uh, what, 14 years in the big leagues? 14 years oh. of uh, sitting the bench a lot. <laughs> <laughs> he knows all about that. in Los That's where you really learned the game. And Jed Jerko, since he came back from El Paso, has been a different ball player. Yeah, and Jed Jerko mentally had to step back from the game just a little bit. And he has improved everything mechanically very much so. And then you could see the swing evolving into what he typically is used to. The power is in his game and also the production, which the RBI production came in huge last night for the San Diego Padres. Since he's been recalled, that was his sixth home run. And how about this? Will Myers is back after three rehab games at Lake Elsinore. He's in the starting lineup at first base tonight. Well, this is huge, and it's been a long time since Will Myers has been in uniform, but he is going to be very excited after a short rehab Look for him to deepen the lineup. Well, he's missed 70 games, but we have missed him. You know how he was electric at the top of the uh, lineup when he was healthy, had that wrist surgery, and he's now back part of this Padre team. You know he's eager to get it going. Well, we're uh, about ready to go here, and that means that, uh, oh, Will Farrell, not tonight, but tomorrow night, a man of many uniforms. Remember in spring training, he went around Cactus League action? Well, he's a man of many characters, and he's also a baseball nut. More on Will Farrell when we come back.
to you by Sony's Action Cam. Prove yourself. By Petco. What we feed them matters. By Mercury Insurance. Log on to mercuryinsurance.com and see how much you could save. And by RCP Block and Brick. Start your outdoor project at rcpblock.com. Welcome back to beautiful Petco Park. Tomorrow, Petco is going to be hosting a very special guest. The one and only Will Farrell will be t attending the game tomorrow. And fans are welcome to stick around because he's debuting his documentary, Farrell Takes the Field. It's when he dropped into 10 preseason games and he played every position on the field. It was all during spring training. And for our Padres, he played right field in honor of Tony Gwynn. Here's a little preview of what you're going to be seeing. Got what, a uh, one fastball? Yeah. Two curveball? Right. Have you heard of a slurge? A slurge. Yeah. I throw a slurge. I developed uh, a pitch called the slurge. I learned that in Japan. Okay. Give me double five. Okay. The unveiling of a new major league weapon, the slurge, and you heard it live. It's a slider, curveball, with a bit of a screwball, and the action of the of the pitch urges you to swing at it it is certainly going to make for a fun filled night at petco park and it's just going to start 10 minutes after the game concludes coming up next our ace takes this mound it's james shield looking for his 11th win it's all going to be on fox sports san diego first pitch is next provides an extra push motivation simply to be better one team's success can serve as fuel for a counter and each win elicits just a little more pride delivering a message hey we're here to play and we're here to win Dodgers Padres game two coming up and yeah, there's something very special about this rivalry and you could feel it electric throughout Petco Park last night in one of the terrific games of the season. Comeback win for the Padres. Beautiful night, 71 degrees. We're set to go, and here's the Dodgers lineup. It's brought to you by Hyundai. Jimmy Rollins, the veteran back in the lineup, leading off at shortstop, then Carl Crawford, Adrian Gonzalez. Chase Utley batting cleanup. You didn't see him in that role often in Philadelphia. Young Corey Seager made his major league debut last night, went two for four, then former 
Padre catcher Yasmani Grandol. Scott Shevler, another promising rookie from the Dodger organization. He's had only a couple of at bats. Jock Peterson, another rookie, has been in that center field spot all season long. And Mike Bolsinger, who really handed the Padres a tough one in Dodger Stadium, made innings with one hit. Time on now. Line. Time now for the Padres scouting report brought to you by the Tilted Kilt and for James Shields. Change in curveball. He's going to have to set that up, pitch backwards at times, but also have success against these left handed hitters. And run support gives him a lot of options to pitch and manipulate this lineup of the Dodgers. He's taking the ball every turn, and this is his 29th start. 171 innings for Shields, who, going back for several years, leads the majors in most innings pitched. We're underway, and the first pitch is swung on and missed. Foul tip by Jimmy Rollins. Hitting just 222, but with power. And now united with his former keystone mate in Philadelphia, Chase Utley. Strike two. Angel Hernandez behind the plate with Conroy Barrett and Hamara on the bases. Shift on now with two strikes on Rollins. Only Jerko on the left side. Change up one and two. There they are Utley. And Rollins so many years the double play combination in Philadelphia now. We're in the Dodger blue. And you got to tip your cap to the Dodgers and going after inquiring Chase Utley. Broken bat one hopper shallow right field and Spanzenberg there to throw out Rollins. The Padre defense brought to you by your San Diego County Ford dealers. Jankowski in center with Upton and left Kemp and right. Solarte a big night last night for the Padres with the bat Jerko at shortstop. Spanchenberg just made the play there at second and Will Myers back in uniform with the Padres after missing 70 games with that wrist injury and surgery at first base. Norris behind the plate for James Shields. Well, Dick Yonder Alonzo with that soreness and out of the lineup probably sped up the process for Will Myers. Good to see him back. Carl Crawford is just eating up Padre pitching last 17 games. We got a shift out there and we got an extra player. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's uh, hiding there, lurking just at the edge of the grass. Could the do Dodgers. his left. Dodgers can't see him. Crawford hitting 421 the last 17 games against the Padres. And career wise, 346, that's the best average of any current ball player in the National League. One and one. And look at that. Right on cue. He hammers one deep to right. And the Dodgers lead one nothing. His third home run of the year. My goodness. He just treats Padre pitching like it's batting practice. Well, Dick, there's certain guys that just you like in certain teams that you feel more comfortable at. And Carl Crawford has that. Watch the location of this cutter. Just leaks over the middle of the plate. That down and in. And Carl Crawford capitalizes. No doubt about that shot as Shields coughs up his 27th homer of the season. Crawford last night was two for four, a single and a double. We just can't get him out. Gonzalez, they did have success last night with Adrian. He went over five. But again, Shields hitting over 300 with two home runs. Back up the middle. Solarte on the run makes the play. Well, let's check out our keys to the game tonight brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. Well, it's been a long time and Will Myers is back in the lineup. That's added thunder to this Padre lineup has been very good of late. Also lengthens the lineup and of the regulars of the Los Angeles Dodgers six left handed hitters and two switch hitters and we've already seen that left handed success against James Shields tonight. That was of considerable distance 436 feet for the home run measured off the bat of Crawford. Chase Utley hitting 218 with six homers. 10 for 44 as a Dodger. 
Well, James Shields out of the gate, very aggressive with his fastball, and that's a good sign. Last two starts against the Dodgers, very efficient outing, seven innings each. But his high total, pitch total, was 86. Andrew Don Mattingly. Utley was two for four last night in RBI double. 0 oh and 2 the count. Clayton Kershaw there with hitting coach Mark McGuire. We won't see Kershaw nor Grinky in the four game series. Isn't that a nice sound? Yes, it is. Reaching out and lifting a fly ball to center field is Utley. Jankowski takes care of it, but the Dodgers strike here in the first solo home run for Carl Crawford. Second goes Jerko, and then it is out of here. Touch them all. Jerko will touch them all. Quite a game last night. Padres took the 4 nothing lead, then the Dodgers back for a 7-4 advantage. The Padres chipped away, and finally Jerko's two-run home run gave them the lead 8-7. They added on for the 10-7 win. Here's the Padres lineup tonight brought to you by Toyota. Salarte will start things with Jerko hitting second. Camp. And up in their usual spots, third and fourth. Norris hits fifth. Will Myers, who 33 out of the 34 starts previously was the leadoff hitter, will bat sixth. Then Spanchenberg shields the pitcher eighth, and Jankowski against the 27 year old Mike Bolsinger. Yeah. Pitching doesn't have a ticket, they've just announced that on the PA system. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not going to be deterred from his. Uh, his meal. Got to look at his manager. He got infield in right now. Two and O oh to Solarte. If you like the big overhand curveball, watch the stuff that Solarte dishes out tonight. He's got a good one. Fastball misses three and O. Oh. It's hard to figure Bolsinger with his record. He's five and three with the Dodgers. Down to Triple A, he was. Three and three with a two three one ERA, and yet they got him for cash from Arizona in the offseason. Catches the inside corner, three and one. Well, it's had a good year for the Dodgers, but also sent down to Triple A when they made the flurry of moves at the trading deadline. Latos and Alex Wood. Oh, back. That'll be just out of the reach of. Catcher Grandall. Time now for the Dodgers scouting report brought to you by Tough Shed. And for Mike Bolsinger, lots of curveballs, over 60% in his two starts against the San Diego Padres and three times a charm. This is the third time the Padres have seen him. They know about the curveball and they can game plan accordingly. Full count now to Solarte trying to get something going here in the bottom of the first. Crawford to home run. Dodgers and high ball four. 
Lead off walk. Good sign for the Padres. And here's the Dodgers defense this evening. Brought to you by the California Lottery. Crawford in left. Peterson in center. Shevler the rookie in right field. Seeger another rookie. And Rollins on the left side of the infield. He's at third tonight. Seeger Utley at second. Gonzalez at first. And Grandall behind the plate for Bolsinger. Yeah, Arizona gave up on Bolsinger last year. Put him on assignment where the Dodgers picked him off. First pitch out of the strike zone to Jerko. He's another Texan Bolsinger from McKinney, Texas. Jerko went to the University of West Virginia, the pitcher Bolsinger at University of Arkansas. Now, Dick, what's going to be interesting to watch as the confidence of Bolsinger, and you see him shaking his head, and now a conference with Yasmani Grandal in his two starts with the Padres, only 92 pitches on that eight-inning effort, but he's only thrown up over 100 pitches once. So that pitch total is going to be recognized both for Don Mattingly and also the Padres trying to drive that up and get into the bullpen. Back on May 23rd at Dodger Stadium, he went eight innings, no runs, one hit, no walks, and eight strikeouts. A dominating performance. So he walks the leadoff man, Solarte. He's behind Jerko 2-0. Well, trailing by a run seven to six last night. Jerko stepped to the plate with a man on in the seventh inning against J.P. Howell. Now by that time Howell had been relieved and it was Jim Johnson who gave up the two run shot and the Padres had the lead eight to seven. Well Dick and I are open. We talked about Jed Jerko and improving himself after he was sent down to the minor leagues. We've seen a much improved approach but also that confidence is starting to creep in and that production, especially the RBI production, is going up. Last 32 games, hitting 301, six homers. And the curveball gets him. One away. We see a different shapes and a big looping curveball. This one has a tighter grip, almost a slider action from Bolsinger. That'll bring up ex Dodger Matt Kemp. Kemp with a two run single. Bases loaded last night. Part of an early 4 0 Padre lead. He is in a nice streak here. 23 games in a row. He's reached base safely. That's the longest active string along with Joey Vato. Backs away as curveball breaks in there. Well, you look at the success that Salarte's had and also the. Revolving door who's hitting second in the production before Matt Kemp giving him opportunities and runners in scoring position. That's what you have to do and really do it all together and Matt Kemp and Salarte have had a really nice relationship having fun with one another and that goes hand in hand. Randall with that snap throw to first base but not close. Eighty seven runs batted in for Kemp. Backs away and on the inside corner. One and two. Backs away of a slider that goes the other direction. It's the backup slider. Well you take a look at it and on our Fox tracks by Honda it catches the corner. Well that's not a swing that you want to take against that pitch. You're thinking it's going to go the other direction and it backs up on. Them. That one didn't. Kemp hits it high and deep to center. Peg Peterson back, and it's gone. Kemp will touch them all. So the Padres answer in the bottom of the first. A two-run shot for Matt Kemp, his 18th. 89 runs batted in now for Kemp and the Padres lead two to one. Yeah, and he gets to meet Don Hervis Salarte at home plate. Watch the breaking ball. It sits for Matt Kemp. This is already in the minds of the Padre hitters. And he demolishes this ball to center field.
there's that sweet sound back of the bullpen. Well, the home run by Crawford went 436. That shot by Kemp is going to be just about the same. Answering back for the San Diego Padres. Well, Kemp continues his hot hitting. Now that's on base 24 consecutive games. He wasn't on base long though, was he? <laughs> Circled the bases and the Padres have the 2-1 lead. Justin Upton, the Padres home run leader with 24. Now that's what you hope against Bolsinger that he'll hang one of those curveballs or leave that slider out over the plate. 2 and 0. And hits the outside edge with a fastball. You know, Dick, sometimes you talk about constructing at bats in the backup slider that he takes. And Matt Kemp's frustrated at this, but it actually is a strike. Well, not swinging at that buys you another pitch, and it's a mistake by Bolsinger. And Matt Kemp capitalizes. Swing and a miss, and two strikeouts for Bolsinger. They measure the home run at 418 feet. Mike Bolsinger's having some conversations about himself. That walk to Salarte frustrated him starting the inning, and then the mistake to Kemp. And you wonder the third time around, he had success the first start, then the next one really wasn't that that great, even though he gave up only two runs. It's a little different in the big leagues. They make adjustments on the fly. And 20 pitches already in this first inning for the right hander. Derek Norris. Big hit last night. A double his 28th of the year. He also had. An infield hit and a single three for four for Norris. One and one changeup. Yeah that changeup is almost a BP fastball. You just tighten the grip on it just a little bit and take a little bit of velocity off of it. There's a hanging curve. He dumps that into center field, but Peterson runs it down. Boy, he can gallop. Looked like that was going to fall for a Texas League hit. But after Crawford homer, top of the first, Matt Kemp with this answer for the Padres, and it's a 2 1 San Diego lead. Now has 88. This young guy made a debut last night and hit 
a couple of shots. Corey Seager, a double and a two run single in his major league debut. Just 21 years of age. Came up from Tulsa, Oklahoma City as well. Hit 293 in the minors for the season with 18 homers. And he's got stardom written all over his uh, resume. Well, the Padres spoiled that debut last night. People buzzing about Corey Seager from spring training on and knowing knowing when it was going to happen. And a lot of people talking high praise about this young man. You always hear comparisons, and I thought it was an interesting one by Don Mattingly. He said he looks like the young John Olerud in the batter's box. Had a big swing, though, doesn't he? Big swing, but also just a, that calmness in the box. And 21 years old, as you said, Dick. That's pretty impressive at a young age. He looked very comfortable at shortstop tonight at third base. Able to follow his big brother Kyle, who plays for the Seattle Mariners. He also was a number one draft pick out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Ground ball sharply right to the first baseman Myers and Will Myers has his first chance tonight. One away. That's a few dollars spent by the Dodgers in that shot with Gonzalez Kershaw. Chase Utley. Equivalent of a small nation's gross national product. <laughs> yes, money Grandall, 15 homers, same number that he hit last year with the Padres in a full season. Sharply hit but foul. Nicely fielded by our ball girl down there in the right field corner. That is a dapper fan. Ted Turner look alike. Swing and a miss. Slow curveball and Grandall way out in front. First strikeout for James Shields. He starts tonight with 184, the fifth most in the league. Dick, as you said, that slow curveball, he took a lot off of this pitch. Way out front is Yasmani Grandal, an executed pitch by James Shields. That brings up Scott Shebler, the 24 year old rookie from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. He was a 26th round pick of the Dodgers. So somebody did their homework back there in Iowa to pick this kid out of the out of the cornfields. And here he is in the big leagues. See James Shields perfect tonight. Seven of seven and very aggressive with that fastball early in this game. Shebler just one for four. Since joining the big club in the minors in the last two years hit 27 and 28 home runs. He looks like he's got some power in that body. Well when you're not a high draft pick you still get chances and he has hit all his way up through the minor leagues. Fouled at the plate. And really earning his stripes. And earning this opportunity at the big league level. One to the count, two out, spaces empty here in the Dodger second. Another off speed breaking ball. As the season has progressed, we've seen this evolution of Shields' repertoire less and less and less fastballs. Probably a, a Dodger fan. That's huh? a true fan. And a full count. There's the fastball backs him off. Uh oh. Shebler has just made his first statement in the big leagues. Second home run off Shields in two innings, and that'll tie it up. That's why he's up here. Solo home runs Crawford and Shebler and the game is tied at two.
The 28th home run given up by James Shields this year. And 17 to left handers for James Shields. And that's the reason why Don Magley inserted a lot of left handed hitters in the lineup. Scott Peterson, another left handed batter. Well, that's a big blow for Scott Shebler, his second major league hit, first home run. Peterson, while his average has continually dropped, his home run power impressive as a rookie, 24 homers for him. Two and zero. Oh. Well, Dick, Chuck Peterson is very patient. Coming into this game, 80 walks, but the hard thing to deal with: 147 strikeouts. That's a lot of swing and miss. Three and zero. Oh. Peterson led off last night. Was one for five. The infield smash off starting pitcher Colton. Colin Ray. Don Mattingly lets his hitter swing 3 0. Take him there. So 2 2 on a three home runs, two solos by the Dodgers, the two run hit, two run homer for Matt Kemp. That home run by Shebler is the longest of the three. They measured that at 443 feet. Oh, that is big time major league slout. You see the Fox tracks by Honda has that off the plate. Angel Hernandez on a 3 1 count has that as a strike. And ball four. First walk from Shields, two outs, brings up the pitcher Bolsinger. And time now for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag SD data strong fan. Just uh, might see yourself in an upcoming telecast brought to you by T Mobile. Bolsinger, based on his numbers, not a serious threat with the bat. He's had 32 trips to the plate with one single. Despite his speed, Peterson has only three stolen bases. When you think about situations for James Shields tonight, yes, the two solo home runs against left handed hitters, but Jock Peterson and walking him with two outs. I don't think you want to walk people, but there's certain situations that James Shields will pick to pitch through this order. That's why I think it's very important for the Padres to get on the board and give him a lead. Ball continues to be a pain in Shields neck. One and one. And if you were the manager of the Padres that would be your view of the games here at Petco. Well Dick some of the weapons that James Shields has. Is the pickoff move let's go back to Philadelphia. Odubel Herrera on first base, but the quick feet by James Shields, not a big lead by Herrera, and you can see the perfect location of the throw to Yonder Alonso, getting him out of trouble and going to some weapons, not only pitching but also the pickoffs come into play. 32nd pickoff of his career. Bends one into the strike zone, one and two. What that'll do is also cut down the leads of these Los Angeles Dodgers. See Jace Peterson getting out, and 
They'll take an easy lead at first and try to gain a little bit of ground, but those quick feet are always on the minds of the base runners. Slow curveball, strike three. A couple of punch outs for Shields, but another home run. Will Myers will come up for the Padres. Welcome back, Myers. The game is tied at two. I don't, I don't think it was necessarily uh, the plan to, to activate him after three games, but I think he felt good. Uh, his timing was very good. You're just watching his at-bats, talking to the, the coaches up there, um, you know, what we saw on video, how he felt primarily. Um, all those things kind of lined up and felt like it was uh, the right time to get him back out here. So after a long uh, DL presence of 70 games, Will Myers is back. He had Lake Elsinore, he had nine at-bats, a couple of hits. He was such a spark at the top of the lineup for the Padres while healthy. Well, the key, Dick, on a rehab assignment is see as many pitches as you can. With that lengthy time on the disabled list, timing is the issue. Obviously, more than three games would help, but he saw a lot of pitches in his at bats. And this is an aggressive swinger, so it's going to be very difficult to gauge that in his timing because he likes first pitch swinging. But he still needs to gain that timing aspect of his swing. Grandal wanted that out of the strike zone, as you could see. One and two. And you think about the wrist problems and such an important element. All of the body parts work together. It's that hinge wrist. Oh, he swings and misses, but the ball goes all the way to the screen, and Myers will be safe. Well, there are ways of getting aboard safely, and then there are others. And the strikeout wild pitch places Myers at first base, leading off the second. Well, again, the curveball, and you're exposed to balls in the dirt. Osmani Grandal does not block that pitch, and Will Myers, after a strikeout, is on the first base. Third strikeout for Bolsinger. Here's Corey Spangenberg. Spangenberg with a modest five game hitting streak is average at 265. Seeger at third, creeping in, looking for a possible bunt. Well, a two out bunt last night by Corey Spangenberg set the table for Matt Kemp in his R R RBI situation with bases loaded. This is part of Corey's game as the bunt. That opens up the hole on the left side with Seeger playing so tight to home plate. He's only 70 feet away. Curveball missing 2 and 0. 
pitcher Shields on deck. Ideally, Spangenberg with a base hit, and that puts uh, Shields in a position to sacrifice. Or a walk would be the same. Two and one. Myers has good speed. Could put on a play with Spangenberg. You come off a rehab assignment, you get activated again. It feels so strange to play the game. And what I mean is, it, it almost feels like your first time you've ever put a uniform on. Will Myers loves playing the game. We've seen him take ground balls as a wrist protection there, even when he's sliding. Because a lot of these guys will put their hands down on the ground while they're sliding. And that left wrist is exposed to that contact of the ground and jamming it on the ground. So that's the reason why he has a brace on the bases. Three and one. Do you send Myers here? Nope. It's a strike. Well, you don't send him there, but I think there's a good opportunity to send him here because of the success of the breaking ball will give that opportunity to Will Myers. Might buy Corey Spangenberg a fastball in this situation. And if Myers is running, you hope he's sliding feet first, not head first. Yeah, I think that's going to happen. Myers aboard the strikeout wild pitch. Full count on Spangenberg. It's like fastball in. Runner goes, and it's a fly ball shallow and right. And young Shebler comes in to make the catch. Back to first base goes Myers. Well, the Padres with it, two sensational arms and Clayton Kershaw and Zach Rinke. They've started 54 games. Look at their combined record 27 and 9 and a 189 ERA and hitters batting 194. Dominant. But the butt is on the right side. Well, the dominating 1 2 punch, and they're going to have to solve that mystery of who's the third starter and possibly fourth if they want to go deep in the playoffs. Just relying on these two guys and keeping their prospects and not going out and acquiring a David Price or a Johnny Cueto. Let's see how it plays out. Here you see number four, Ron Renneke, the former manager with the Milwaukee Brewers, now the third base coach for the Dodgers. Shields pops it up. Utley, the second baseman, for the second out. Let's go down to Ali Sturm. Ali, what do you have for us? Well, I was talking with Clint Barmas earlier today, and he has definitely played a mentor role to Travis Jankowski. You see it a lot in the clubhouse. They're deep in conversation. I asked Clint what they're usually talking about. He said offensive strategy. He's been so impressed with how willing Travis is to learn and to listen and just implement it on the field. And then I asked Clint, you've really taken him under your wing. Did anyone do that for you? And he goes, yes, Allie, certainly. It was Mark Sweeney. Oh, that's nice, Allie. It's paying it forward and what you learned in this game from your teammates and how they pass their knowledge, their experience on the game. And Clint Barmas, not only is he a successful shortstop and also doing well with the bat, it's that clubhouse presence that you have to have when you bring up these young players and you have to teach them the aspects of the game that are so important. Listen, every knowledge and every experience was lent to me from all of my teammates. And Clint Barmas, to me, is one of those guys that really takes on that role and, and embraces it. Well, he's passing the baton on as you did from someone else. Who was your mentor? I had so many of them. Wally Joyner, you, I mean, I could name a bunch. Runner goes and it throws into center field. And here goes Myers to third base. Bobbled in center by Peterson. Oh, my. Here's Myers. As much as he knows he should be sliding feet first, he just can't help himself. A stolen base error, Grandol. Let's just hope he's okay. Well, you see the break, and this is a good situation to go. And again, the head first slide and that brace helping him and advancing the third base on the bad throw to second. How about this play? Oh, my gosh. Well, he's fearless. Well, you understand that brace, which he's cleaning the dirt out. He's not fixing his wrist. He's cleaning that dirt out. So the Padres have the tie-breaking run in this 2-2 game at 
third base in the form of Myers. Jankowski could pick up his fourth RBI. Randall not happy with that yeah, now, throw. And now you know why it went into center field. He couldn't see the throw. He didn't know where the second base was. Didn't want to see it. <laughs> Jankowski though flies it out to center. Plenty of room out there, and Peterson has it, ending over. Padres leave a man at third. It's still 2-2. Crawford and Shebler, a 2 2 times. We go to the third, and we're pleased to have with us the president of the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York, Jeff Idelson. And Jeff is here for a very special occasion tomorrow night. We'll talk about Will Ferrell later, but it's nice of you to join us, and I, I can't thank you enough for what was the most incredible weekend of my life in Cooperstown this year. Well, it was really special and uh, a great weekend. I'm glad your family and friends could be there to enjoy it. Very well deserved. You've uh, been with the Hall of Fame now 20 years. Uh, you had some baseball background. You as an intern out of college in Boston. Then you were the Yankees in media relations. I was. It's kind of like being on both sides of the political aisle, being in Boston and then New York. But uh, I was lucky to work for two great family-owned organizations, the Yankees and the Steinbrenners, and now in Cooperstown. It's a great, great trio. Now, Jeff, the last few years, you've had some really good classes going into the Hall of Fame, obviously. Mm -hmm. He's going in, and it was such a great, great weekend. Does it get better and better for you every single year in the experiences that you guys put on? Absolutely, Mark. I mean, it's uh, every class is unique, and, has, and you know, you play the game, you understand. But every class is unique and has its own set of characters. And uh, great guys went in, you know, four great guys this year, Biggio and uh, Pedro Martinez, Randy Johnson, and John Smoltz. And looking ahead to next year, and uh, who knows what we'll get dealt. But I know there's a guy that uh, pitched here for a long time, and, We'll see what the writers think. Yeah, and you think of Trevor Hoffman and uh, that opportunity to go in. I know it would be huge. Obviously, Tony Gwynn, Mr. Padre, was in and, as in, and also that opportunity for Trevor Hoffman. He's done a lot in this uniform, and uh, it would be an extra special occasion for fans here in San Diego. Hey, what's the process now? When will the voting take? The Baseball Writers of America are those that uh, make that decision. There's, is there a limit as to how many can be inducted in a given year? No, there's no limit, Dick. So the writers have a month of December to vote. It's about 600 of the men and women who do so, and uh, any candidate who receives votes on 75% of the ballots earns election. It, uh, that's really a tough. You've got to get 75% of them. It's so many outstanding players who haven't made it, and yet we're close 65, 70% of the, the votes. I think about Gil Hodges, how. You know, he, he didn't make it. He, uh, he's, he's, I believe, has the most or the highest percentage of guys who have not gotten in. Uh, you certainly can make a case for, you know, for Gil. But you have Ken Griffey Jr. next year and Trevor leading the class. And, uh, you know, you, you just two guys who had some unbelievable numbers. Unbelievable. Well, you know, you're speaking and singing with a choir here in San Diego that how thrilling it would be for Trevor to make it. Uh, I mean, he's 
his 51's up there, and uh, everyone loves the man, and for good reason. He was not only a, a great relief pitcher, but he played the game the right way. Well, and uh, earning election to the Hall of Fame is about the career you had, excellence over your entire career, but it's also about how you treated the game and respected it. And as you say, there's no one who respected the game more than he did. You know, Jeff, also, too, I had the luxury of, of having one of those special tours when we went and played those games. Uh, and it is, it is a fabulous event to just go and, and see the history of the game. But what, what you're talking about, too, is it's not only the numbers that you put up, but also the way you played the game and the, and the, the creativity of everybody in the Hall of Fame. That that's really speaks volumes when you go on that tour, doesn't it? It does. I mean, and, and again, uh, showing how difficult it is to get in. There's been 18,500 players there about since the National League was formed in 1876 that have played the game 1% are in Cooperstown, 215 players out of 18-5. So for the guys who are a little bit on the outside looking in, they're maybe in the top 2%. So it's difficult to get in, and, and it is a special place. The museum is terrific. Uh, players have been incredibly generous in donating artifacts, as have the teams, and without their generosity, we wouldn't have the museum that we do. Well, you fans who have not been able to make it to Cooperstown, I mean, it, it is a treat. And you're not, if you go, don't go for one day because you could spend a whole week in that museum and not, not see everything. And it's noting here 40,000 artifacts, 135,000 baseball cards, uh, 3 million uh, documents, 14,000 hours of audio and video. I mean, it is, if you're a baseball fan, it's, it's the candy store. It is, and as we like, we, we kind of think of ourselves as the Smithsonian and Library of Congress rolled into one for baseball because we are where the game is documented, and uh, the game has had such a rich history, not only in it unto itself, but its uh, permutation in American culture. Well, Jeff, also special moments, too, and uh, the Padres just had a special moment. Their first in their, in their history with Matt Kemp having the cycle. Did you get some stuff from Matt Kemp and in, in, uh, showing that in the Hall of Fame? We uh, Matt in the Hall of Fame. We have artifacts from earlier in his career, but we don't have anything from the cycle. So probably have to ask him. Well, I think he'd be uh, eager to give you a bat or a shoes or maybe the ball itself. This is Carl Crawford who homered his first time up and a weak wave at that delivery from Shields. Rollins has led up with a walk here in the Dodger third, a 2-2 tie. We're talking with Jeff Idelson, the president of the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. I think a lot of fans don't understand. They think that the Hall of Fame is part of the aegis of the Major League Baseball. It is not. It's a separate entity, a private, charitable, uh, nonprofit organization that really is run by you folks there in Cooperstown. There's one. Back to first, not in time. Not close to a double play ball opportunity off the bat of Crawford. One away. A well, nice play by Will Myers, keeping that in front. The double play ball. Spangenberg didn't have time with Carl Crawford getting down the line. As we take a look at this, this is a slowly hit ground ball. Nice turn by Jed Jerko and a good feed, but not having time to get the fast Carl Crawford down the line. That'll bring up Adrian Gonzalez and always the mixed chorus of applause and booze for Adrian. Well, this puzzles me why fans would, uh, after his great time here in San Diego, would boo him because the Padres couldn't sign him. wasn't his fault. He wanted to stay. <laughs> Maybe he'll come back. Maybe there'll be a time where Gonzalez is San Diego's own high school. Great years here with the Padres. Will uh, again wear that SD on his uniform. Padre fans are such great baseball fans. When Tony went in, uh, Tony Gwynn in 2007, along with Cal Ripken. Town of 1800, we have, as you know, Dick. One stoplight. How you many saw people? 82,000. Oh, wow. 82,000 came out for Tony and, uh, and Cal. I, I'm glad and Cal, and I'm I'm so glad Tony got to experience it. He's uh, spe he was a special special guy. And his wife and family were there this year to represent Tony. Foul again by Gonzalez. And then there's the the other old timers, and as I recall last year, Tony Oliva and Richie Allen came one vote away from making it but there's only 16 votes they had to get 12 right and they didn't make it they just missed by one it's it's difficult to get in even with a small a small voting uh, electorate mm -hmm. well that's got to be tough to be on that committee yes so you're there in that candy store day after day after what, yeah. what thrills you most about your job well you know it's it's 
I just I think Dick just how uh, much I appreciate the game's history and as it unfolds on the field to know that we have the responsibility in Cooperstown of documenting it that the players are glad to be a part of it that the team support us we are independent as you said a not for profit but the realization that baseball said such an important part in shaping American culture and to have a small part as a caretaker now and making sure that that history continues to be told uh, to me is a, incredibly exciting. And a fan who would want to make plans to go back either for the induction ceremony or any other time of the year. And in many ways, it's better to go at another time where it's not so crowded, where you have the, that beautiful little village to yourself and the museum isn't quite so crowded. Right. Like as Yogi says, nobody goes there because it's too crowded. <laughs> nobody goes there anymore. Hello to Gonzalez. So is you just go online to uh, baseballhalloffame.com baseballhall.org and uh, yeah we're open the year round uh, busiest between memorial day and labor day but look if you like fall foliage if you've never experienced that and you're from the west coast it's beautiful with the leaves turning colors if you uh, want to be brave and come get in a snowball fight with me on main street come in december <laughs> <laughs> and it's one of the great hotels in the country, the Otisaga Hotel that houses uh, all the Hall of Famers when they come back. But in the non induction time, that's available too. I, that's got to be one of the top 10 most beautiful hotels I've ever been in. It is. It's on the historic register. It's a historic hotel. It's got a great golf course with it on a, uh, on a lake, Otsego, which is beautiful. It's really a charming village, and you almost feel like you're stepping into a Rockwell painting. Jeff, I'd like to go back to Trevor Hoffman, obviously Mario Rivera. You're thinking about the, the closers of the game and this type of error and how things have changed. What's it going to take? Because you, you think about the Lee Smiths and the Bruce Gossages of the world. Mm -hmm. The relief pitching has changed, and the closers especially. What's going to have to change for those two to get in? Obviously, I think Mariano Rivera is a shoe in because of the success with the Yankees. But how about a Trevor Hoffman? Uh, involved with that is the process going to change because the game has changed I think so I mean it's you know look I mean you can't you can't argue with the success that Trevor had I mean it's it's, it's right there in front of you and I think uh, ground ball they'll get one there back to first no throw weekly hit ground ball no chance for the double play so two out I think you know the writers have had a hard time Quantifying relief pitching and closers, and you know, look, it took Goose like eight or nine years to get in. Lee Smith's on the outside looking in. Yes. Uh, you know, I don't know, but I, it's, it's undeniable. It's an important position. You know, the DH is another one. You know, Edgar Martinez, mm -hmm. whatever you think of them. Uh, you know, the, the table was set for you know with Paul Molitor going in ahead of them, and hopefully with the guys like Goose and Eck, uh, Raleigh Fingers, Suter, all being in there, Hoyt Wilhelm, uh, that'll hopefully. Uh, have the writers focused on the importance of relief pitching and especially closers. Yeah, of course, this city and all the fans of Trevor Hoffman rooting for him to get that initial ballot, get that out of the way, and not have to worry about sitting on the sidelines uh, for yet another season. It's got to be agonizing, and so many players, great, great players, have had to do just that. It's tough. I remember with Jim Rice. I mean, I worked with Jim in Boston in the 80s, and 15 years, you know, he went on the 15th ballot, and I'd call him every year, and I'd say, Jimmy. Just, you know, stay cool, man, because it's going to happen eventually. And it did. And maybe for him it's a little sweeter, you know, because he had to wait that much longer. And, uh, you know, as Goose Gossett said, nobody ever scared me when I was on the mound, but Jim Rice came the closest. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's so much talent at this level, and you, you're talking about the elite of the elite. And I, I think that's a, where you have to really preserve that. And you guys do a fabulous job at, at doing so. That late. Under at first two outs. Well, I forever will be thankful for uh, the graciousness of everyone involved and the generosity and and how beautifully organized and orchestrated the whole time on that weekend was. It was absolutely perfect. And I've said it, and people say, "Really? How good was it? Was it better than you thought?" I said, "It's the greatest weekend of my life." Uh, that's that's nice to hear, Dick. And I know how uh, beautiful a speech you gave, which was great for the fans who wanted to hear it, and folks from San Diego and. Really just a great weekend 53 Hall of Famers there which is a huge number a huge number and just a, a testament to how they feel about Cooperstown as well. Another walk up the two on and that was to be able to rub shoulders with baseball history all the you know the greatest players in the history of this game all right there. I took about our first night there my wife Barbara and I we got there late at night first person we saw was Johnny Bench 
And without hesitation, Bench comes up and bear hugs me and said, Enberg, you're in the Hall of Fame. And man, what a way to start your weekend. <laughs> it's almost like he threw a no hitter and then he came out to hug you. <laughs> exactly. And it happened over and over again. And I thought because we're honorees, not inductees, that we would be kind of a second class citizen. No, no, the, every player, every Hall of Famer treated me just as if I was one of the fraternity. And that, well, you, big thrill. You are. It's a big, it's a great baseball family, and we're proud to have you be a part yeah. of it, Dick. Well, Jeff, thank you. Oh, we didn't talk about, or can we talk about why you're here in San Diego? Is it anything to do with Will Ferrell? It is. Uh, you know, he went in spring training and, uh, superseded Burt Campanaris by not only playing nine positions but actually ten and for ten different teams. <laughs> uh, you know, I kind of like uh, maybe he played a quintuple header. And so uh, they're going to uh, uh, HBO is going to show his film tomorrow night after the game. Yeah, up on the big screen right after the game. On the big screen and uh, we'll have a little pre-game uh, pre-film ceremony uh, on the field with Will. Swing and a miss by Young Seeger. And it's one and two on the third baseman. So I guess you can't tell us, but are, are we going to see a invitation to Cooperstown? Are we going to put Farrell into into this hall of honor? Well, you know, Dick, uh, stranger things have happened. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got the right guy in Will Farrell. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff, for being with us. Thank you for all you do for Thank baseball. You, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks, man. All right. Good to be with you guys. Right. See you tomorrow night. Okay. All even at two apiece. And it's time now for our timeless moment brought to you by Coors Banquet. On um, this date in 1993, Yankees pitcher Jim Abbott, born without a right hand, no hits the Indians. One of the great thrilling moments, improbable moments in baseball history. Abbott, University of Michigan, All America, played with the Angels and then the Yankees, no hits the Cleveland Indians. Uh, there wasn't a ball fan anywhere that didn't cheer that moment. Well, if you get an opportunity to spend some time around Jim Abbott, you understand what he has gone through adversity wise, but first class in all facets. Born without a right hand and and able to make the major leagues and then pitch a no hitter and be a star player. I mean, it, it's hey, we all have a chance. Exactly right. And some overcome a great adversity to become. Not only role models, but uh, but heroes in our life. All right, Mike Boltzinger pitching to Jan Salarte, leading off the third. Salarte walked and scored first time up. Came around on the home run by Matt Kemp. Well, second time around, and you see the Dodgers trying to pitch Jan Herbert Salarte in. Fastballs in, a little bit of a cutter. See if that exposes him to the breaking ball. In the dirt. Curve ball, two and two. Well, 
Well, what we saw from Jan Herbert Salarte last night offensively, both from the left side and the right side, it's a little bit of calmness in the batter's box and not taking anything away from his aggressiveness. But sometimes you slow your body down, your hands work quicker. And he looked locked in last night from both sides. A big home run on the right side. Boy, Mark Swinney, when we were down there watching batting practice uh, before the game, and you look up from home plate to that uh, third level of the Western Metal Supply Company yeah. building. Did a human really hit a ball up there? He couldn't hit a golf ball up there. Three and two. Up the middle. Ranging to his right is Utley and throws out Salarte. One out to Chad Jerko. Yeah, I think there's going to be some shenanigans tomorrow night involving Will Ferrell. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be fun, folks. Uh, along with your ticket to watch the third game of this four game series, the Padres and Dodgers, after the game, they're going to show that 30 minute documentary, the HBO documentary of Forrest Takes, Ferrell Takes the Field. It's going to honor cancers for college to help uh, cancer survivors realize their dream of college education. And uh, Will Ferrell will be here. I'm sure we'll make some comments. And uh, it's a good reason Jeff Idelson's here with the Baseball Hall of Fame. Something's going to happen there. This might be kind of fun for you to enjoy. It's going to be a full night. Baseball night in San Diego, Saturday night. And we expect to sell out. Hope you're here. Well, one and two to Jerko. He struck out chasing that curveball. Tough to lay it off. It's got such a big break. And you think about that, and it's always in the back of your mind. So it start taking that fastball that he throws occasionally, and that looks like a 95 mile an hour fastball. Jammed him with the fastball. That's exactly the pattern. Inside jam you, and then you throw that hook. Yeah, and it's not velocity that he wants. He wants to locate. You're seeing Yasmani Grandal asking for the ball out of the strike zone a lot tonight, especially deep in pitchers' counts. There he is setting up higher. And a pop fly near the dugout. Long run, and Gonzalez. Was running out of room. Had that ball been hit higher, the chance for the out, but Jerko still lives because that ball was not hit too high in the air. 50 pitches now for Mike Boltzinger. Like we said earlier, he's only one time in his starts at the big league level has he gone over 100 pitches. In that game where he went eight innings, I think he, I don't know if he even hit 90 in that game. 92 pitches on the May 23rd against the Padres. 92, yeah. He's already at 50. And another foul. So Churko fouling off a lot of pitches. A reminder our closed captioning for tonight's game is brought to you by Wiener Schnitzel. I like saying that. Wiener Schnitzel. I like the product too. One and two. Deep drive to left field. Is it long enough? It is off the top of the wall. Jerko in a second base with a double. Did a fan touch it? That might be a, a play in which they're going to take another look. It was right at the top of the wall. There was some fan action there. Whether or not. It was touched by a fan. We'll have to see. That was just a laser to left, not high enough, or that would have been a home run. Yeah, you see Pat Murphy on the horn immediately asking his guys inside, but you see the fan on over the fence. Yeah. That, that hit the glove. And the glove was above the fence. And I think upon review, we're going to see a home run. Padre fan arguing that he didn't reach over the wall from our angle it wasn't 
You're not able to discern whether he touched it above the wall, but was he over the wall? If he didn't go over the wall, then that's another matter. Well, like you talked about last night, Dick, I think this should be reviewed at all times, even if it's questioned at all. And it's that borderline play at the top of the wall. Jerko continues to make solid contact. That definitely goes off the glove, and you can see it ricocheting down. Maybe there's a side angle that will really give us a, a better look at whether or not the fan was over the wall. He has the right, as long as he's behind the wall, to be able to play the ball. Thank goodness he's wearing a Padre fan, a Padre outfit, not a Dodger outfit. They'd have to bring in security to protect him. This poor guy saying, "Come on, I was just reacting to the ball. I got my glove here." No, oh, he's just telling the security guard, "Look, look at it. We got a new scoreboard this year. Take a look." <laughs> he's hoping there's no. Incriminating evidence when they replay it. This is for our benefit, not on the big scoreboard. And now they're showing it on the big scoreboard. We'll get a reaction. Home run! Touch them all! That's one of those touch, pause, 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 <laughs> them all! Jerko back to back home runs last night and again tonight. And the Padres lead three to two. Number 12 for Jerko. Well, again, game planning for the San Diego Padres in sitting on the breaking ball tonight. Over 60% for Mike Bolsinger, and this sits right over the middle of the plate. Jed Jerko using that lower half to get the barrel through the baseball. Here's Matt Kemp, and he sends it out deep to center field for the second out. Kemp with the two-run homer to center field his first time. So five runs scored in the game, all five by home run. Three solos and a two-run homer by Kemp. And the Padres on Churchill's blast take the lead just as they did last night with his two-run homer that gave the San Diego Padres an 8-7 to seven lead. You can see it ricocheting off his glove and going off the outfield fence. That's the right call. Two outs to Justin Upton. Last three games, five for 11 for, for Upton. Struck out his first time. Jet since he came back from El Paso has been a different player. Well, I got to agree with you, Dick. And when you get sent down, and that is very frustrating for the player. But you start collecting your thoughts. Say, hey, what's going to happen here, and how do I get back to the big leagues? Obviously, they had a plan for him, what he had to do, because he came up here, he shortened his swing. Mechanically, he looks much better, not the longer swings, and. He's staying off that slider more, which I think really comes into play. Staying in the strike zone, and when you get mistakes, you got to capitalize rather than foul balls off. And caught looking up to knew it. Strikeout for Bolsinger, but a 378 foot home run. Thank goodness for that fan <laughs> that it was clarified and it went the Padres' way, and uh, he will <laughs> be in a position of alienating a big crowd. Jerko. Since coming back from El Paso, his seventh home run.
Frontier player profile brought to you by Arco. The National League leaders in strikeouts. James Shields with a couple tonight has 187 fifth in the National League. Clayton Kershaw look at that 251 strikeouts. Hmm. Yeah, and they said he started off a lot slower this year. Well, I'd like to see how slow you start off with 251 strikeouts. He's on pace to pass the 300 mark. Yes, Monty Grandall struck out swinging first time, then Scott Shebler, who homered, then Chuck Peterson in the fourth. Ball flying here at Petco Park. As we move to the top of the fourth. Well, Steve Finley joins us down next to the dugout. And Steve, you had an opportunity to hit here. How'd you like hitting at Petco Park? Well, I remember the first home run. It might have been the only home run I hit here. I thought it was going 20 rows deep, and it barely made the first row. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I liked hitting here. <laughs> You know, it's such a different mindset from a home run hitter to guys that had to rely on hitting the gaps. And they, there's so much space. And I think, Steve, you can talk to this, too, being a center fielder and patrolling so much area really comes into play mentally. That leadoff walk. Shields walked the leadoff man the last inning, got away with it. I didn't, uh, to finish what you were saying there, Mark, yes. It, 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 it used to be like a ball was a frisbee thrown into the wind for me, running up, running to a ball in center field here. The wind, the wind current seems like they've changed a little bit and the ball's carrying. Plus, they've moved the fences in a little bit, which I think is the equalizer now to make this park a little bit more playable for hitters. And some feel, Steve, that the buildings, the tall skyscrapers that have uh, erupted around the ballpark in the last 11 years also have blocked some of that wind. Absolutely. You used to feel a really strong wind coming in from right field, the way the wind would curl around the stadium. I don't feel that anymore. Scott Shebler showed his power the last time up a 443 foot homer to right center field and yeah, that was on a change up by James Shields. Let's see how they attack him now. 24 year old from Cedar Rapids Iowa curveball strike. Well the change up and you can see leaks over the middle of the plate. Credit Shebler for squaring that up but not that you can't throw the change up. Again to him you just have to locate it a little bit better that stayed up which is easier to adjust to. Long foul to left. Shields has given up 28 homers. 23 of them with the bases empty. Well, they say solo homers don't beat you. If you're going to give them up you want to give them up as a solo shot. A ball two strikes to Shebler. Slow curve foul at the plate. Got a piece of Derek Norris. Well, James has really taken a lot off that curveball tonight, and that slow breaking ball has had a lot of success with. Got Corey Seeger the previous inning on that slow breaking ball. Something seems strange about Shebler. Oh, that's it. The number. Maury Wills wore number 30. And the count two and two. He was a 26th round pick. That's amazing. Consider you multiply that by three. Over 600 players were selected before the Dodgers took him. Chop to third. Salarte gets one back to first, not in time. Another ground ball. That's the third in the game. Hit too slowly to turn two. Got to get the lead runner. Grandall gone, and that'll bring up Josh Peterson. Game break coming up. AL East clash. The Baltimore Orioles and the Toronto Blue Jays. Probably say there's going to be some home runs in that game break. Peterson walked the first time one of four given up by Shields that matches his season high for free tickets. He's done it now seven times. Pensive pose. For the veteran Utley. Oh, 
He went around. I see this with Jed Jerko here at, at on the shift. He's got to come here to second base for the double play. Just an odd turn for Jed Jerko. It's going to be interesting if they get that ground ball, how they play it. Well, if it's to Jerko, he knows he's got to go there himself. If it's to the second baseman, which in this case is Barmas playing what would be the normal second base position, then Jerko's got an awkward move to the bag to get to the bag and and be going away toward third base and having to throw back. Yeah, so much of that turn is momentum through the base from the shortstop position, especially that four to six as Salarte switches with Jed Jerko. With two strikes on the hitter. Upstairs. You, know, you watch Jock Peterson's mechanics right now and seeing it really from this angle. He is so late and everything's moving fast. Yeah, you, you understand why he's not hitting right now because he's not making any adjustment to get his foot down early. And if you keep going late and fast like that, your, your chances of success really go downhill. Yeah, I agree with you, Steve. And there's a lot of mechanical issues when it comes to Jock Peterson. The strength is in his swing. Runner goes. Swing and a miss. The throw by Norris. Not in time. A strikeout Peterson for the second out and the steal by Shepler, a big guy with power that can run. In high school, he was a 55 meter champion as a you know a husky athlete. Well, Vince, let's take a look at the swing by Peterson. When you look at him, all of his weight just goes out in front, of his head's traveling. And he really never gets his, his foot down and allow him to see the ball. And when you do that, you're not seeing it, and you're going to swing it more bad pitches like he's doing right now, especially that slow curveball right there. Yeah, I agree with it. You see the balance is not even in the equation for Jock Peterson. That'll bring up the pitcher, Bolsinger. He took a third strike his first time, and then strike one on the breaking ball. And you also mentioned that Peterson uses a heavier bat than most of the Dodgers, so you get that big heavy bat going, and it's tough to check. Yeah, you got to generate. Swing and a miss. Another breaking pitch. 0 and 2. This is a tough play. Shields able to make it on the underhand flip to Myers. And that's it for the Dodgers. They lead one in the fourth. The Padres lead it 3 to 2. Baltimore's Chris Davis not one but two home runs against Toronto. He now has 40 on the season as the Orioles blow out the Blue Jays 10 to 2. That 
It's usually the score in reverse. Toronto scoring all the runs. Yeah, he had a down year last year, and the home run production is right back where it was two years ago for Chris Davis. Well, Dick, let's go back to the top of the fourth, and you see this swinging bunt and the communication part. Will Myers, not typically your first baseman, waits for James Shields to field this, and he covers first. If Will Myers comes in and fields this ball right in here, that's the difficult spot. He takes a couple steps, goes back to the bag, and nice play by James Shields with the easy put out. And for somebody who hasn't played that much at first base, that was uh, the right call. If he goes after it, there's no one to cover first base. Shields would not have gotten there in time. Derek Norris leads off the Padre fourth and takes it high ball one. He flied to center his first time. It's home run or nothing here tonight. Two solos for the Dodgers, two home runs for the Padres, the only hits in the game. And the difference being that one of those home runs by Kemp came with a man on. The 60th pitch coming up from Bolsinger. And he misses 3 0. Well, tomorrow night, remember it's a 5 40 game. We'll be on the air at 5 o'clock on Fox Sports San Diego, game three. Tyson Ross pitching great ball of late. He's 10 and 9 against Alex Wood, 9 and 9. High strike just at the top of the zone. Well, credit these San Diego Padres driving the pitch count up. 61 for Bull Singer right now. And another curveball in there. So 62 pitches to get nine outs. You know what I like about the approach from the San Diego Padres perspective it's not taking pitches it's just having a plan we always stress about having an approach at the plate and Steve Finley could talk a little bit about this too when you're locked in your approach and you have a plan of attack you can drive up that pitch count by staying in the strike zone it is you know I think when hitters are aggressive like these Padres hitters are and the more you stay aggressive the more you learn the strike zone and what you can hit and what you can't Fly ball in the shallow left center, a long run for a trio, but the shortstop, Rollins, goes out to make the play. The center fielder, Peterson, and left fielder, Crawford, weren't going to get there, but Rollins goes deep into left field to make the catch. Well, nice play, and the veteran shortstop goes back, takes his hat off so he can see it over his head a lot easier. You can see him flipping that hat off. And then really battling that pop up. That was hit off the end of the bat by Norris. Nice play by the veteran shortstop. Will Myers struck out and reached safely on a wild pitch. Now I used to watch Ozzie Smith. Red Shandies used to hit him ground balls. And the last thing he would do is hit pop ups to him. And that's exactly what Ozzie would do. He'd flip his hat off so he could look over his head and that visor wouldn't get in the way. It's interesting. Of course, at night, uh, not affected with the sun. During daytime, too, he would flip it off, even though he'd have to look up into the sun. Yeah, he felt like he could look farther back without really that brim of the hat ex exposing and limiting his vision. You see the veteran shortstop, Jimmy Rollins, doing that on that pop up by Norris. You know, when the ball goes up, it doesn't matter how ugly it looks, as long as that ends up in your glove, that's all that matters. <laughs> that's that's right. a good point. Yeah, that was a little awkward there for Rollins, but he makes the play. Outside, fastball, two and one to Myers. You know, it's good to get Myers back in the lineup now, get him some bats here in September because, you know, coming back off an injury like he had in a wrist surgery, it's going to take some time to get his groove back in his swing. Still forsaking the batting gloves. He goes with a barehanded grip. Well, and Steve, also, I wanted to ask you, too, being the everyday player, how many at-bats did you need on a rehab assignment to feel comfortable timing-wise? And what was the hardest part coming back off a of rehab? You know, it, 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 I saw Will Myers going to a lot of bullpens and seeing pitches, and, and, and timing's an issue, but it's also, you know, your swing is not exactly the way it was before. 
at least not in the beginning. On every every major injury I had this, uh, with uh, back surgery and foot surgery, it took me almost a full year to get back to my normal swing of where I was in the beginning. Full count now to Myers. Bases empty, one out in the Padre fourth. They lead it 3 2. High fly ball. He just missed that one. Way up into the night. And Peterson has the second out. Corey Spangenberg flied to right his first time. Well, Dick, even with two outs, Corey Seeger, the third baseman tonight, really pressing the action, trying to take that bunt away from Corey Spangenberg. Well, he proved he would bunt in any situation with a with first and third the other day. Squares and it. takes a strike. Now Colorado leading the Giants in the ninth inning, two to one. San Francisco's lost six in a row. They're at bat, top of the ninth at Coors Field. And that game is now a final. The Rockies beat the Giants two to one. Seven straight tailspin for San Francisco with three key players. On the DL, middle of the infield, and Pence, the right fielder. Crawford, the shortstop, and Panic, the second baseman, out. Now we've seen some interesting things by Bolsinger tonight, especially when he gets into two strike situations. He's throwing a lot of pitches way out of the strike zone. Easy takes for the Padres. That's another factor driving up that pitch count. Arizona defeated at Wrigley today 14 to 5 the Cubs win Atlanta lost again they've wow. lost 10 in a row they are playing their way into the first pick of the draft next year Washington beat them 5 to 2 1 and 2 again to Spangenberg strike 3 called he knew it for the first time in the game a pitcher has a 1 2 3 inning we've completed 4 at Petco One is hit deep down the left field line. It might be, and it is number 50 for Greg Ball. That's a nice number, isn't it? 50 home runs, 1998 for Greg Vaughn, who now joins us in our Fox Sports San Diego booth. 
Enjoying that trot, huh, Greg? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those good memories, good times, good times. I'll tell you what, Dick, on that uh, on that 50th home run was his last at bat of the season, and everybody in the dugout, it was like all of us hit that ball, and, and it was just <laughs> what he did for that club and what you did for that club was it, it, we just embraced that whole moment because we knew how special it was for him. And, uh, man, we jumped on your back a lot of times that year. Well, I, what I remember is, like, you know, being a little kid. You know, it was like the Little League World Series. When, I mean, you know, when everyone hits a home run and the whole team comes out. I just remember seeing Joey, Joey Hamilton come out. And we used to call him Jack in the Box or Face because his head was so big. He was there. He, he picked me up. You know what I mean? And, you know, those are things you remember for the rest of your life. I mean, uh, we, we were that tight. And like Mark said, you know, when I hit that home run, it was like, the whole team hit it. Yeah. Dodgers here in the top of the fifth. Jimmy Rollins, their leadoff man, to start things. He has grounded out and walked. You know, that's uh, everyone says the same thing, Greg. When you retire, you're away from the game 10, 15 years, and you try to recall special moments like that. But the real part of this baseball game that gets to your heart and soul is the camaraderie with your teammates. That's what you really miss. That, that is what we miss. You know, uh, for me, shoot, it, it hurts to play, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, still, you know, having a relationship with Mark and, you know, all the guys, Ashby, and, you know, me and Swain were tight. I mean, we, we got traded together. We, you know, when my son was playing at State, I had him come out there and try to work with Corey. So it's the relationships, you know. Uh, and now that I, I can play golf a little bit, you know, <laughs> so, so, you know, that's my locker room now, you know, so to be able to uh, – to get together with the guys and still be able to talk to them and have them in our lives, it's, you know, it's something special. Line drive off the bat of Rollins into the right field corner. Kemp gets to it in a hurry. Here's the throw into second base. Not in time. The veteran Rollins can still pedal, and that's the first hit of the game that's not a home run. A leadoff double for Rollins. Davey Lopes, the first base coach there to congratulate. Uh, looked like a breaking ball again by Jimmy Rollins and him slashing it down the right field line. And hustling into second base. Nice play by Matt Kemp attempting to throw him out at second. He turned it on between first and second. He can still motor. Now, Greg, I wanted to ask you, too. We have Steve Finley down near the dugout, and you played many nights and day games next to Steve Finley. Some special times in a, in a great outfield. Obviously, Mr. Padre in right, Steve Finley in center, and you in left field. That was one of the best outfields I've ever seen. And, Steve, how was it playing next to a guy that hit 50 home runs? <laughs> uh, that was fantastic. You guys were talking about that 50th home run, and I remember it like it was yesterday, sailing over the fence there. And, you know, Vaughn, I don't know a lot of people realize it. In 1997, that winter, he was traded. The best trade the Padres never made in Greg Vaughn that year. Yeah, I agree with that. So do I. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned Corey and your your son. He is in the AAA with the Mets now. And, I, and how's that feel, knowing that it's come full circle and he's so close to the big leagues? Well, I tell you what. I mean, it's it, it's it, it's awesome to see your son, you know, fulfill a dream of his and be, and, and, and turn into his own man and, and you know accomplish his goals. But also as a father. Uh, I don't sit down too much. I'm, a, I'm walking up and down the concourses. <laughs> I'm always by myself. And even when uh, he's playing at state, you know, uh, all the parents wanted to talk. You know, I'm, I don't talk too much during <laughs> baseball games. You know that. You know, but I want to say about Finn, though, he made my job easy playing left field. Shoot, that was like when I got traded to uh, Cincinnati, Barry Larkin and playing shortstop. You know, when you play around great players, they make you look good. Oh, you made a lot of people look good, too. Yes, sir. Bonnie, Bonnie changed my career, and I know he doesn't even realize this. I walked in the clubhouse one day, and he's putting this, rubbing this sauce that looks like lava on his shoulders. <laughs> and, and I said, what is that, Bonnie? It's hot sauce. You should try it. I put it on, and I started crying about 10 minutes later. It hurt so bad. And that hurt so bad, I didn't feel the pain that was in my shoulder, and I used it every day the rest of my career. Now you know why I used it, Finn. I played in Milwaukee where it was like 22 degrees, so... I was trying not to feel anything, you know what I mean? So. There goes the runner to third, and Crawford fouls it away. That's out of play, and Rollins had a big jump from second base. You know, Greg, I, we, we touched on it earlier about Clint Barmas being the guy that 
really is paying it forward and you did exactly that in the locker room and how important that chemistry is in teaching people the game you played it hard you played it every single night and who was influencing you when you first came into the big leagues well i was lucky i, I, I was blessed to have robin you know they put me right next to robin out who was like an adopted dad to me you know and then i had jim gantner paul molitor you know and like i said after the game you could not leave until they left. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we were talking baseball. That's great. And, and you, were, you were learning what you did right and what you did wrong. But also you were learning about the game and, you know, how to, how to be a pro. You know, so many of these kids, even, you know, having a son that's in the game, I said, you guys don't even talk about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, I couldn't get enough of it. I mean, I still get excited when you talk about hitting, you know, and seeing you guys and, you know, coming to the ballpark. There's no, no other place I'd rather be. You know, that with the social media now, maybe there's a lot of other stuff going on, but I don't know how to do half of it. So, yeah. you know, the ballpark's still my favorite yeah. place. I mean, it's beautiful every time. It doesn't change. <laughs> no. You know, you remind me, Greg, well, back to the mound. Shields looks back. Rollins and gets the out at first. An easy play. Finally, Crawford and easy up. And working with Don Drysdale, and he was relating when he first came up with the Brooklyn Dodgers and that great clubhouse with, with Duke and Campy and Pee Wee and Gil Hodges and on and on and on. And he says the first thing that uh, they told him, they grabbed him by the jersey and said he was 19. He said, hey, kid, hurry in and out of the clubhouse, hurry in and out of the game. <laughs> and they wanted you to stay there and talk about the game after it was over. Well, I tell you what, it, I mean, that, that's something that's missed now. I remember Hoffy brought me in. A couple years ago, he goes, Vonnie, hey, come to the clubhouse, you know. And I mean, at the time we walked down there, I don't even know if they were gone, you know what I yeah. mean? And it was the same way on some of the, the other teams around. You, you notice the, the good teams, they, they do things differently. And you, you learn a lot, especially when you're young, like Barmas. And, you know, we I seen him down in the uh, clubhouse before the game, and he goes, you know, thank you for, you know, being there for me when I was coming up and I was a rookie and you and Sweeney. And, you know, you had Hilton and Walker and all those guys. I mean, that's how you learn. You pass it on. This is the best game in the world. And to, to not want to talk about it or, yeah. or, or get knowledge about it, I mean, where are we going to rush off to? Yeah. Greg, yeah, the, who, who are some of the your, your favorite players watching the game now? Obviously, you're integrated with your son playing at AAA level, but you, you watch the game. You're a fan of the game of baseball. Who are some of the guys that you really like watching and, and getting to know or possibly even – just love watching play on a nightly basis. Well, without a doubt, you know, you, you know, Bryce Harper plays the game the way, the right way. He reminds me a lot of Camry. I mean, he goes out there every day and he lays it on the line. And sometimes his body gets beat up behind it. But I remember the same thing. I remember running to him, Wall in Colorado. Everyone's like, you know, you can't do that. I mean, but there's only one way to play, and everything else is wrong. You know, you know, you got Trout. I mean, Kent plays it hard. Upton plays it hard. I mean, you. I mean. There's only one way to play. You know, I, I can't get enough of watching Adrian hit. You know what I mean? It's, you know, Prince plays the, the game the right way. There's certain guys that, that respect the game of baseball. Speaking of that, at least kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. He does it the right way. Certain guys. And then there's other guys that think they're doing the game a favor. But those are the same guys you're talking about that, you know, you'll see this year, the next year, they won't be around. Yeah. Yeah. Well, credibility goes into it. And, and your credibility was sky high because you played every day. You wanted to play every day. I remember a Bruce Bochy would come over and say, Greg, you need a day. And what was your response? No, no way. You know what I mean? I mean, you never know when it's going to be your last day. So why, I, why would I give up a day? Yeah. You know, and uh, I mean, it was my dream to be out there and to help the team. So you can't I, even get me some playing time. Well, I didn't want to get you overexposed. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's a walk to Gonzalez. Looked like a pitch around to me. First base was open. So two on, one out. And Chase Utley hitting cleanup for the Dodgers tonight is the batter. We're talking with Greg Vaughn, one of the, the great Padres of yesteryear. And it's, uh, it's wonderful to hear from you, Greg, your passion for the game we all love. Oh, you know, I, I, like I said, I mean, this game is the best game in the world to me. I, I mean, like I said, I, I, I was honored and blessed to be able to play this game. So I, I, I still can't get enough of it. You know, and, you know, I started a high school program back home, and I love teaching, and I love you know, just just being a part. If I can give some knowledge, you know, and it's and like I said, it, it, it's a passion that will not die. I mean, it's inside of me, and you know, it, it's something that I truly, truly love. And you know, like I said, I don't miss playing because, like I said, once you get to a certain age, it hurts. But but <laughs> the, the friendships and you know, 
Seeing my man Mark Sweeney with the same haircut I have now is awesome. <laughs> hey, you, t- you touched on him earlier, and uh, Trevor Hoffman was important to all of our lives. He has the opportunity of possibly going into the Hall of Fame. But what's your view on him, and, and tell us your view of, of the great number 51, Trevor Hoffman. Well, possibility, I think, is a guarantee, and uh, there's nobody better. I, I, when I say better, I mean, you, you, you know, when I, when I talk to kids, I talk about when you look at the best players of any sport, they just see the, the results. They don't see the work. Nobody worked harder than Trevor. He was here before everyone in his usual outfit, yeah. running the, back and forth all over the stadium. And he took it seriously, but he was also the best teammate. He was one of the guys that cared about every single one on the team. You know, and, I mean, I consider him a dear, dear friend. No one worked harder. No one ate more than he ever ate either. <laughs> more than we need to know. <laughs> but like I said, he worked harder than anyone. Runners, runners go, and it's a walk again. Boy, Shields, who had given up four walks the most all year for him, has walked now his fifth and sixth batters, and the bases are loaded with one out. And that's got Pat Murphy uh, pacing in the dugout. How far did they let Shields go? The bases are loaded for the rookie Corey Seager. Six walks tonight for Shields. He's got the Dodger fans down that left field line roused. Started with the Rollins double. Gonzalez walks. Utley walks. You enjoy these situations. Bases drunk and you get up there and maybe get the, the big blow, the grand slam. Especially with less than two outs. You know what I mean? I remember Mark, especially, like I said, that me and this, this is like, you know, we were like Ebony and Ivory when we were <laughs> Hall of Notes, you know, when we, were <laughs> when we were playing. He was, uh, I mean, he was pulling for me. And like I said, our team was so close, we weren't afraid to pass the baton. So yep. we weren't trying to do too much, you know. So right here, if, if, if he didn't throw me a pitch, hopefully I'd be smart enough to let Cammy or Wally, you know, drive in the run. But being a run producer, this is what you dream of. Ebony and Ivory, huh? <laughs> yeah, a little salt and pepper, too, yeah. yeah. Shields just can't find the strike zone. He's fallen behind 2-0 oh to Seager. Yeah, 10 in a row for James Shields, and that'll put some worry in the manager. Ooh. He threw it down the middle and challenged Seager. Yeah, that was a changeup, and Seager swung at it like it was a fastball. You probably didn't see too many of those in AAA. Yeah, exactly right. Good arm speed on that, and... You see the action, but he had to throw it for a strike. Base is loaded. The Padres 3-2 lead threatened here in the fifth. And another ball. Three and one. And not close. Frank Garces and Marcus Mateo getting ready in the Padre pen. Well, he needs a quality pitch here and a double play would be great for James Shields. Just executing a pitch. Rollins, Gonzalez, and Utley. The Dodgers have them loaded up. That's a strike. He saw him swinging 3-0 last night, and he takes a 3-1 pitch right down the middle of the plate. I think that had a lot to do with that 2-0 changeup. That's Monte Grandal in the throws of an awful slump. 0 for 27 on deck. Ground ball to first. There's one back to first. No, throws it away. Backed up by Myers. A run scores. It's tied. And that was the uh, fandom play at second base. As the shortstop Jerko skipping over the bag. The throw doesn't, the errant throw does not hurt the Padres. It's tied at three. They get an out. Rollins scores. You see Seeger, this looked like a high changeup. And this is to Myers. Looks like Myers took a little bit off of this throw just to get the out. But Jed Jerko gets turned upside down by Chase Utley. Watch how Chase goes in hard away from the bag. And that is. That's a way he was not near enough to be even get his right left hand on the bag. That should have been an automatic out. And Mattingly may be arguing about the very same play we saw last night. Did the fielder hit the bag and trying to turn two? From my view down here, he was nowhere close to the bag when he caught the ball. On the other hand, Utley was nowhere close uh, to the bag when he took out the 
runner, so you could call it either way. That is true. That could be an automatic double play. And I'm surprised they didn't call it because that's not even close to him being able to touch second base. Last night's play, Chris Conroy, the neighborhood play. Here's the play that Mattingly was furious about last night. And they ruled just by a whisker that he was not in contact with the play. And after the game, the quote by Chris Conroy is, I don't believe in the neighborhood play, which infuriated the Los Angeles Dodgers. And that's the reason why you see Mattingly going out there. This has happened to them twice in the last week. At the moment, credit Seeger with his third RBI in two games. Rollins has scored. Seeger safe at first and over at third base. And you see Pat Murphy outside the dugout. It's going to be interesting to see if he takes a turn at crew chief Ted Barrett after Don Magley is finished. This is a heavyweight fight. And here he comes. Sure. He saw what we saw that that Utley was way out of the baseline to take out the relay man. Now here comes the conversation about Chase Utley with that slide into Jed Jerko. Here's a slide not even close to the base. You have to be able to touch that base and he goes way out of his way to clip the legs of Jed Jerko. That's an easy call. If you're protecting the players you have to make this call. Now Jerko did not have contact when he with the bag when he caught the ball. That's that's a legitimate argument. But on the other hand Utley. In a violation of uh, taking out the runner without being you can you can do what he did but you've got to be able to prove that you can touch the base with some part of your anatomy. Exactly right. Well the question is 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 being out of the baseline reviewable. And that is uh, another part of the issue. Well I think when the dust clears neither manager is going to be happy. But the call will stand as is a run scores first and third two outs. And it's a 3 3 tie. Gonzalez winds up at third, and Seeger with an RBI fielder's choice at first, and Grandal, 0 for 28, is the batter. 103 pitches. That's a painful inning for Shields trying to get through five with six walks. Tiebreaker 90 feet away. Gonzalez Seeger there at first. Well, this is when you got to grind it out if you're James Shields. Obviously over 100 pitches. Wow. Well, when you're wild, you don't get the close calls. Late umpire Hernandez thinking ball. A ball and a strike to Grandal. Another miss, two and one. Again, you got to remember for Pat Murphy, and you saw the discussions with pitching coach Darren Balsley. When your starting pitcher doesn't go deep in the ball game, you have to start worrying about how you're going to use the bullpen. Last night, Colin Ray did not go deep in the ball game. Again, second game of this series, having to go to your bullpen early. And a bouncer to Myers. He'll take it to the bag himself, considering to get out of it with only one run scoring is uh, a moral victory for the Padres.
Rays Baseball, brought to you by Saquon Casino. Play, win, together in the heart of San Diego. And by Jack in the Box. For a limited time, try the new Portobello Mushroom Buttery Jack with melted garlic or butter. That goes very well with a glass of suds. Our final beer fest this Friday night and fans enjoying uh, some liquid before the bowl game tonight. Social sparkler night. The last one of the year and what great events and obviously great energy in the ballpark tonight. We thank Greg Vaughn for coming into our booth. He said some very important uh, things didn't he? Amarista comes off the bench and swings at the first pitch one away. Hitting for James Shields. Uh, neighborhood play last night. The play on the left was called safe. And the play on the right <laughs> was called out. You figure. Yeah, it's so interesting and it has to be a consistent call and they're going to have to figure this out. Moving forward there are adjustments need to be made. And Major League Baseball has said that moving forward they will make adjustments. So James Shields uh, pinch hit for Amarista. And so we'll have a new hurler on the mound for the Padres in the top of the sixth inning. Our last 18 pitches for James Shields 13 balls only five strikes. He had to grind it out and he leaves the ball game and tied up. Five innings three runs three hits six walks. Four strikeouts for Shields. Hundred and seven pitches for Shields. Ball gets away, but Randall gets the out to Gonzalez. That's the fifth strikeout for Bolsinger. He's now retired seven in a row. Tonight's game here at Petco Park is presented in magnificent HD by Sony. Top of the order, Jan Salarte walked and scored. Came around on Kemp's two run homer in the first inning and grounded to second his last time. Two outs in the fifth inning, and that line score is a bit peculiar. Three runs, three hits for the Dodgers, three runs, two hits for the Padres. That's what home runs will do for you. Two and oh. Well, Dick, earlier in the game, you asked me uh, when we were talking about Clint Barmas and paying it forward. I, I know Greg just visited us in the booth. He did a lot for a lot of people in that locker room, as Clint Barmas does now, and paying it forward. But Greg Vaughn to me was one of my favorite teammates I've ever had because he had not only treated the game the right way but played the game the right way and also wanted to have conversations with everyone that came up because as you heard Robin Yount was a big factor in that Jim Gantner. Well Molitor the two two Hall of Famers there in the middle of the diamond for the Brewers exactly. Three and one to Salarte. It's always good to see Greg Vaughn and I call him Hootie the Blowfish one of the best one of my best friends and. It's so much fun in 1998 creating that culture. And ball four, the second time that Solarte has walked tonight. The only two three passes from Bolsinger. You know, Dick, I, I want to go down to Steve Finley because I think it's very important to to note because he was an everyday player on that 1998 team. And finish the thoughts of the, what that clubhouse atmosphere was really like. Well, it, you would you hit the ball, you hit the field every night expecting to win. Uh, and the culture in the clubhouse was everybody held everybody accountable for that process. If you weren't doing the work you needed to do to go out there and help the team win, guys let you know it. Guys like Vaughn, guys like Hoffy. We had veterans in each aspect of the team in the bullpen, in the starting, in the bench with you swings. So we all held each other accountable, and that kind of culture in the clubhouse is what creates winning teams. Jerko homered the last time, the ball into the first row, touched by a fan. Home run number 12 gave the Padres a short live 3 2 lead. Two run homer last night was the winning blow. Time called by catcher Grandall. You know, one of my favorite expressions about this game of baseball inside, and it, and it sounds so simple, 
but it, it just rings true of good teams and exactly what this conversation's all about. Good teams, you'll hear it. I'll pick him up for you. Yeah. I mean, it, it's you think about that in life terms. I'll I'll pick him. That's a, a good marriage, a, a good neighborhood. I'll I'll pick him up. Yeah. You had you stumble there. Hey, I'll take care of it, and it's going to be okay. Yeah. That's a, it, to to your point, Dick, and that's what chemistry is all about. And whoever's not on board with chemistry, to me, means that they've never gone through a winning atmosphere in a winning situation. In 1998, when someone mentions that team. Exactly what Steve Finley just talked about. We were all together. Totally different personalities off the field. But when we got in the locker room, we got on the field, everything was together and for the next guy to your right and left. And why we won? Because we created that culture and we had that chemistry. Well, and Nicasio, we saw him last night. But how, you know, everyone would like to have that. I mean, is it just by ac partly by accident? You just happen to get the right group of 25 guys? Is it, is it the managerial and coaching leadership? Is it uh, veteran player leadership? How well, does it happen? I think it, it, it filters all the way down from your organization and bringing in the right people to implement all of those situations. Yes, you have to have talented players on the field, but they have to know that it's not just individual efforts, it's collectively. 2-0 to Jerko after a visit from Rick Honeycutt, the pitching coach for the Dodgers. You know, and to, your, and to your point, Mark, it's not an easy recipe to create. It takes time and it takes effort. Uh, if it was that easy, every team would be doing it. Yes. Two and zero. Oh. He bends in the curveball. Just to go back, I use this illustration talking to younger kids. Here's the Jerko home run. A double for a moment, and then the umpiring crew ruling that the fan in left field did touch it over the top of the wall. And the home run, Jerko. That uh, two outs in the ninth inning. One out, man at third, tie game. All you got to do is hit a fly ball, ground ball, you win the game, strike out. Take strike three. You're walking back to the dugout. Your teammate comes up. I'll pick him up for yep. you. He gets a base hit. Everyone forgets you struck out. Exactly. He picked up for you. And turn up the volume. You're celebrating in the locker room. That ball is fair, and the long throw is in time as Seeger sends it across. And that's it for the Padres. Yeah, home run fireworks at Petco tonight. Carl Crawford, a 436 foot home run, but bottom of the first, Matt Kemp answered a two run shot, 418 feet. Then the tying home run by the rookie, Scott Shebler, 2 2. And then Jerko says, I can hit him too. A line drive laser first row ruled a home run touched by the fan in that first row. And then the tying run on this fielder's choice, controversially off the bat, uh, rookie Corey Seeger. So 3-3 three, three, the score after five innings. Olsinger's gone five, allowing three runs on 
couple of walks and six strikeouts. Only two hits, but they were both home runs. Shields control problem, six walks. That finally did him in in the last inning as the tying run scores. Kemp a two run homer, Jerko a solo shot. Shebler, then Peterson and Boltzinger, or a pinch hitter in the sixth inning. Marcus Mateo on the mound, and this pitching change brought to you by El Cajon Four. Well, Marcus was reinstated off the disabled list when rosters expanded. <laughs> One of the premier uh, bubblegum blowers, Matt Latos. Shebler ball jumps off his bat, and it did. Back in the second inning, 443 feet over the jack deck, over the first row section in right center to the aisle, almost uh, into those bleachers behind the sand pit. Watch out! That one gets into the upper deck in a hurry. Well, he's been late on the fastball. The changeup is the home run pitch that James Shields threw to him. So let's see if he exposes himself out of the strike zone and maybe a high fastball here. Another foul at Triple A Oklahoma City this year. Shebler hit 241, 13 homers. The two previous years in the minors, 27 and 28 home runs. His first major league blast tonight. Swing, foul tip, strike three. First strikeout, Mateo. That'll bring up Jock Peterson. We got away with the pitch previously, but then he goes to that fastball up in the strike zone and he swings underneath that pitch. He is a little bit tardy on that fastball, as you can see. Peterson has walked and struck out. One hundred forty eight times he struck out this year. Andre Ethier on deck for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He'll probably hit in that pitcher spot. Haven't seen Ethier yet in the series. He's having a good season. In fact, if he were in the lineup, the best batting average of any Dodger, 293. One and one to Peterson. Breaking ball in on the hands. Got the picket fence going on the right side of the infield. Only Solarte on the left side. Way inside. Ninety five in the fastball. He's wearing it just like Mateo is. Clayton Kershaw. <laughs> Side saddle on that brim. I like the fact that Kershaw, when he's not on the mound, he's hanging on that railing. He wants to be as close to the action as he can. Out of play. That'll make it into the very top deck here at Petco. I saw former Padre Joe Whelan before the game, and that's exactly what he said. He said Clayton Kershaw has been one of the greatest teammates he's ever had played catch with him all the way from the first day of spring training and has taught himself a lot about how to pitch and like I said before paying it forward is very important and Clayton Kershaw does that all the way to the screen and a one out walk to Peterson time now for the San Diego fans of the game and how about this youngster yeah dad I'm having a great time. Yep, I'm going to take some hacks at you too. Here we go. Yep. Here we go. Whoa. Got to go to the body with the left, then the face with the right. Thanks for taking me to the game, Dad. I love seeing kids in the ballpark. 
He's wired. <laughs> Talk about a handful. Andre Eth here introduced here in the sixth inning. And with a left hander in the game, the counter will be made by Murphy to bring in the left hander Frank Garces. No, maybe it's going to be Zipchinski. Garces was up earlier. It will be Scrabble coming in the pitch with one out here in the sixth inning. Clayton Kershaw, Rene Rivera hits a routine fly. Yasiel Puig throws it away. The first of a comedy of errors. AJ Ellis throws it away. Hanley Ramirez backs up, throws it away. One run scores, and here comes Reimer Liriano. And watch Clayton Kershaw. Do I really want to cover home plate? Nah, I think I'll just let you slide in there, and I'll go on and do my business. Oh my, two runs. Salarte and Liriano scoring against Kershaw and uh, wild, wild series of errant throws. The reaction of Clayton Kershaw was priceless <laughs> yeah. after that circus. Kind of like the Little League homer, run until they tag you. Exactly. Call your grandfather and tell me hit a homer. <laughs> so Ether pulled back, and Mattingly is going to use the right handed hitter, Justin Ruggiano. Ruggiano, as a Dodger, picked up his first uh, RBI last night as a pinch hitter. And it uh, it came in the sixth inning off the same man uh, Zepchinski that he faces now. You know this is the interesting spot where here in the top of the sixth inning, but with the September call-ups and the extended bench, you can make these moves as a manager for Don Mattingly and not even worry about it. So you have plenty of right-handers on the bench. No, oh, he drills this to left center field. Will the ballpark hold it? No. Pinch home run, Ruggiano. And the Dodgers take the lead 5 to 3. The third Dodger home run. The first as a Dodger by Ruggiano. Well, coming off the bench and a 1 0 count, you're looking for one thought and one thought only that pitch over the middle of the plate. Looked like a fastball that just cut over the middle. And Ruggiano getting his second pinch hit in two nights, and this one's a home run. Crawford hit a solo, then Shebler a solo, and now the two run shot, pinch hit homer, Ruggiano. For the five runs for the Dodgers on home runs, and that's following a pattern of the year. They lead the National League in home runs with three tonight. They have 160 and 46, over 46% of their runs come in on home runs. And that's the most 
since 1956. The percentage of runs by home runs. Well, base is empty now and up to Rollins who has a double and scored a run. Zepchinski last night gave up a couple of runs in his one inning of work. Three hits. And two on one swing tonight. Only one of those runs goes on his card. The other belongs to Mateo. And John Edwards acquired from the Texas Rangers in the Will Venable deal warming up. And a base hit by the diving Salarte, and Rollins has his second knock. Still only one out here in the sixth, and Carl Crawford, the batter, left handed hitter, so Zepchinski will stay in to pitch to him. We see getting into good hitters counts, and Jimmy Rollins just looking for a specific pitch. And the diving Salarte. To his left, but that ball's by him already. Five runs, five hits for Los Angeles. Crawford, the home run the first time up, grounded out the last two. Swing there, one and one. And Carl Crawford helped Zepchinski in there. 1 0 count and out of the strike zone. Justin Rosiano. And the Dodgers have picked up a lot of players here to take them to the finish line in the regular season. One and two. Well, as we said last night, Dick, the Dodgers in there. Comfortable spot after sweeping the Giants and the Giants go over to Colorado and lose the first two games. Your scoreboard watching, but you understand the importance of every single day and just trying to win that ball game. They picked up Ruciano from the Seattle Mariners last year with the Cubs and before that Miami and Tampa Bay. Pretty good pinch hitter. RBI single last night, two run pinch homer tonight. Swing and a miss, strike three. Second out of the inning. First strikeout for Zepchinski, and that'll bring up Adrian Gonzalez. Gonzo looking for his first hit in the series is 0 for 7. He did walk the last time. Down next to the dugout was Steve Finley. Steve, you were predominantly an everyday player. The later part of your career, you hit off the bench. How important it is. To have bench players going towards that playoff run. Well, I think one of the Dodgers' strength this entire year has been their bench. I mean, you had Justin Turner over there, Van Slyke. These guys can come off the bench and go deep, get base hits. They all hit for high averages. And when you've got those weapons over there, it makes decisions a lot easier late in the game. And Salas still uh, has part of his soul and heart here in San Diego and has done a lot of good things in our community. He has a College scholarship fund told me these nearly 40 kids here have earned a Gonzalez scholarship into a four year university. Good citizen. 0 oh 2. Well, he loved being in a Padre uniform, going over to Boston and then getting traded over to the West Coast. Had to make him very happy. Closer to San Diego, our fine city. Rollins at first, two outs. They're going to keep Jimmy Rollins close because this is a good situation to run. 0 2 count, two outs. Why not? There he goes. And the ball is driven to left center field. Lots of power there. Jankowski on the run. He can't get there. Home run, Gonzalez. 
Zepchinski gives up a pair of two run homers. Ruciano and now Gonzalez makes the grand tour for the 26th time this year. And the Dodgers have taken a 3 3 game to 7 3. A low two count by Mark Zepchinski. This is elevated. We've seen Adrian Gonzalez go the other way many times. Terrific effort by Jankowski. He came close to a circus catch. But in the bleachers, a couple of home runs. That's four tonight for the Dodgers. And a pitching change. Sixth inning. Four runs for LA and it's seven to three. The San Diego Padre with more on him. Let's go down to Alley. Yes, I spoke with John earlier today and he said it was a whirlwind of a trade. It was part of the Will Venable trade, but he is so happy to be a Padre. He said one thing that really stuck out to him was just how welcoming everyone was. James Shields talking to him the first second he stepped into that clubhouse. But he said he got a lot of phone calls from guys as well. Plus he got phone calls from Rangers guys about people who knew Padres saying they knew he was going to fit right in. All right. Thank you, Alley. He was signed originally by the Cardinals as an outfielder. And here's another story of a guy with a big arm, not quite good enough a hitter to see his way to the major leagues. In fact, he was released after a few years in the Cardinal organization and played one year in independent ball. And well, that's yeah. where he started to pitch. You have to persevere through this game, and those stories go a long way. Another opportunity for John Edwards and Making his fourth stint in the majors this year, three with the Rangers and first for the Padres. He hit 94 on that last fastball. He'll get up to 97. Chase Utley, that's a breaking ball, two and one. He grew up in the Dallas suburb of Keller, Texas. Ninety five, but a miss three and one with a triple A Texas team uh, this year. Twenty three saves and an ERA of one point two three. So AJ Preller attracted to this power arm in the Venable deal. And Utley attracted to that pitch sends it to the top of the jack deck. That's a home run. Home run derby for the L.A. Dodgers three in the inning five in the game. Utley's first as a Dodger. Well just too many hitters counts for the Los Angeles Dodgers if you're a Padre pitcher. 
You have to throw a strike. They capitalize on the mistakes. This is the second home run as a Dodger for Utley. Just enough. And it's now eight to three. Edwards with a Padre baptism from Utley and the Dodgers. Five Dodger home runs tonight. Eighth man to bat, Corey Seeger. Line drive, base hit. Into the corner. Seeger on his way to second. And the hit parade continues. They've batted around as Grandol comes up. Seeger now has his third major league hit. Let's take a look at the swing of Corey Seeger. Very simple approach, and you see him tracking that curveball. Look very comfortable in the batter's box. Very impressive young man. Yeah, very short to the ball and nice extension out through it. Just 21 years of age fans. Dodgers got themselves another good one. As if they need more talent. Gonzalez and Utley with home runs. Here in the big sixth inning for L.A. And here's a man who's desperate for a hit. He is in the throes of a terrible slump. 0 for 29. Yasmani Grandal. Breaking ball for a strike. 0 and 2. Yeah, when you're 0 for 29, uh, these pitches will be called on you. The borderline pitches. And that's a nice curveball by John Edwards. Seager at second, two gone in a five run Dodger sixth inning. Frank Garces gets up for the second time tonight. If you like home runs, this is your game. Seven of them hit tonight. Five by the visitors. Padres have a couple of two run homer by Kemp and a solo by Jerko. That's their only hits in the game are those two home runs. Well, five runs in the sixth last night for the Dodgers, and they went home with a loss. Good point. Five more here in the sixth tonight. There's plenty of time left for the Padres to start picking away, but. They got to get an out here and get the offense in action. Strike three call. And the inning comes to an end. But the Dodgers on three home runs, a single, a double, and a walk, have five more. And it's an eight to three LA lead.
four game series. Tyson Ross will be on the hill for the Padres. Five o'clock our TV time here on Fox Sports San Diego. Baseball night in San Diego and a special treat. Your fans will be able to stay after the game and on the big screen see Will Ferrell's 30 minute uh, baseball humorous documentary. And that should be a lot of fun. So make your plans to stay with us after the game. It'll be Ross 10 and 9 against Alex Wood. Uh, a rare left hander the Padres are going to see and they'll see another on Sunday. Brett Anderson a couple of southpaws as Jimmy Garcia comes in to pitch. Jimmy Garcia in his 40th appearance this season. A lot in that first half. He's had four stints with the Dodgers this year as well. Interesting arm slot. You'll see it. And talking to some of the Dodger people just throwing strikes consistently and. It's got nasty stuff, but it's. Stuff over command. 25 years old, another product of the Dominican Republic. Camp, then Upton and Norris for the Padres. 93 on his first delivery. Kemp, the two run homer, and a fly ball to deep center. Home run was the center field. One and one. 18th homer of the year for Kemp tonight. His RBI count up to 89. Top five in the National League. Off the fist, roll to the right side. Gonzalez way off the bag and makes the 3 1 put out. Let's take a look at the delivery in the release point of Yimmy Garcia. That's at low three quarters. And he works underneath the baseball. It's an inconsistent release point at, as well. And you see Matt Kemp having to get out of the strike zone because not picking up that release point. Fastball, fastball and slider combination, but the inconsistency is what he needs at the big league level to fix. He's been up and down from the big club to the minors a couple of three times this year Garcia Upton struck out both times facing Bolsinger. And all those runs while Bolsinger was still the pitcher of record so. He's the one who's going to benefit from that a three lead if the Dodgers hold on to win it. Marcus Mateo in a third of an inning didn't allow a hit, but the walk became a run. So he's the pitcher of record for the Padres. Well, you look at the Padres last night, one run in the sixth to answer that five run inning of the of the Dodgers, and one run in the seventh, four in the eighth. And just knowing you did it last night, those thoughts are fresh in your mind. And Pat Murphy wants to see how. These guys react after a tough top of the sixth. Two and zero oh to Justin. Off first, and that's going to carry just into the crowd. One out here in the bottom of the sixth. The Dodger five run top half of the inning quieting the. Padre faithful. And Upton unable to find that. 93 mile an hour fastball it's two and two. That's 93 but it flattens out because he get works underneath the baseball. See Derek, Derek Norris in the on deck circle. High full count. So 
So the Rockies beat the Giants again, two to one tonight. Pittsburgh over St. Louis, two top teams, nine three. The Pirates won in St. Louis. High fly ball hit well to right center. It's deep to the wall and caught by Shebler. Just not enough syrup on that pancake this morning. Came close. Well, you see the pitch, and Justin Upton just gets under this, but I thought he had enough wood to not only get it out of here, but at least get it off the wall. Ball's not located very well by Garcia, but nice play by Shebler off the sign of the Fox Sports San Diego. I think Upton thought that was a home run the way he left the batter's box. Oh, it makes that play difficult for the right fielders going a long way, and that's the deepest part of the ballpark. So two away to Derek Norris, who has flied out and popped up. Probably still with only two hits in the game. 94 on that fastball. I see Yumi Garcia effectively wild. Looking through this, this date in baseball history, an <laughs> interesting note. You got to go back a ways. 1928. Get this. In 1928, the Boston Braves of the National League played a doubleheader on this date, September 4th. The first of nine consecutive doubleheaders. Wow. Is that ever a major league record? Must have been a very rainy spring in 28. That'll wear you out. Stay tuned, guys. We had a game break. San Francisco Giants and the Colorado Rockies. Full count now to Norris. Will Myers on deck. How about those double headers, though. <laughs> wow. Nine in a row, nine days in a row. I would have got some blank time. <laughs> Swing and the best strike three. So Garcia comes in, works a one, two, three, sixth inning. It's eight to three, LA. Carlos Gonzalez does he hit a home run every game in a two to one win for Colorado over the Giants he leads the National Leagues he's not red hot he's Cholula hot yeah that's hot sauce 36 home runs on the season and Nolan Arenado with 35 tonight 
And here's a look at the National University standings in the NL West at the moment. Giants now have fallen seven back and if the Dodgers win obviously seven and a half. And the Arizona Diamondbacks and Padres tied at 65 and 69 going into the game the D-backs have lost. Well, I don't care where you're hitting you have that many home runs you're doing something right. Ground ball into right field base hit sharply struck by the rookie Scott Shebler. He homered his first time up. Nine hits now for the Dodgers. Five of them home runs. Well, Don Mattingly gave him the spot start, and he has capitalized with his opportunity. Crowd tonight on this Friday, 33,025. Padres going over the two million mark last night. And we hope you've made your plans to be with us tomorrow night. Tyson Ross, Alex Wood, Will Ferrell. Him yelling at his mom to get the meatloaf. <laughs> I'm telling you, every time I see him, whatever movie he's in, I start laughing. Peterson has walked twice tonight and struck out. Alex Guerrero on deck, the pitcher spot, who next? Two and zero. Oh. John Edwards' first appearance as a Padre. Ninety-four on the strike. Two and one. Beat L.A. Well, be faithful. Larry Bird, my favorite athlete of all times. All time? Yeah, I absolutely loved Larry Bird. Growing up, grew up in Boston, right outside of Boston. The Celtics teams, as you remember, Dick, were unbelievable. And those games against Magic Johnson and the Lakers were incredible. I think both of them, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson, had the biggest impact in the NBA, in my estimation. And when he got, when he re, they retired his number, Magic Johnson wore a Celtics shirt underneath his Lakers uh, warm-up. Yeah, Magic is, he's so class. I had the privilege of calling that 79 national championship game Magic Johnson and Michigan State against the Sycamores of Indiana State and Larry Bird. And Bird had carried that team. All the way to the finals. But then they ran into three All-Americas. Yeah. On that Michigan State roster Greg Kelser a great great player and Jay Vinson and Magic Johnson. They needed another Larry Bird on that Indiana State side. They shined bright on that day. Peterson sends a high fly ball to fairly deep left center. Upton moves over in the gap to make the catch and returning to first is Shebler. Well, after the game, Will Farrell will see uh, the entire documentary. He was in all the uniforms of the Cactus League. He moved around that day and night. Finally, with the Padres, played right field. <laughs> What does he say? His new pitch is the splurge? Yeah, that was the interesting part. He came into the Dodgers dugout in a Giants uniform. <laughs> See Pat Murphy discussing things with young Austin Hedges. Had a chance to chat with Austin's dad, Charles, uh, before the game. Obviously very proud of his son. and Gave us a couple of nuggets. He said that he grew up and was on the same not little league team at 12, but uh, club team as Bryce Harper and wow. Harper stayed at the uh, at the Hedges house. Pretty good club team. huh? Yeah. How about that? A household. <laughs> and they were very competitive each trying to outdo the other and they were both pitchers at that time. Now good to hear Greg Bond talking about the young players in the game and Bryce Harper the way he plays and so much talent and infused young talent in the game of baseball these days. Did you hear what uh, Harper did last night? Something that's only been accomplished four times in something like 60 years. 
Fly ball to right off the pinch hitter Guerrero's bat. Kemp makes the catch two away. That Harper did not have an official at bat last night and scored four runs. Yeah. Walked four times, scored all four times. In fact, I shortchanged it. In 101 years, wow. only three other players did that. Larry Doby in 1951 with Cleveland, Joe Morgan in 73 with the Reds, and Ricky Henderson in 89. Well, he's earned his respect in the way he has played the game this year and made adjustments with his swing, and now he's getting that respect almost like you think he's a Barry Bonds. How they're pitching around him now. There goes the runner, and he got a big jump on Edwards. Stole that on the pitcher. And Shebler has his second steal tonight. So they've got a man with speed and power. He's a big package. His first two major league steals. Rollins has a double and a single and a walk. Two for three tonight. Ninety five mile an hour strike from Edwards. You can see why the Padres were attracted to Edwards. Big guy at six five. Got a live fastball. Two balls and a strike. It's only his fourth year, full year as a pitcher, Edwards. Too high. He's already a winner this year in the offseason. They discovered he had testicular cancer and they were able to remove the cancer and as he said, you know, my life was saved. Fortunately they found it early. There had no spread of the disease. Here he is on a big league mound. Yeah, I commend him for that and going persevering through that challenge. Well that's ball four and a wild pitch that will move Shebler over to third. And another walk to the Dodgers. That's the eighth by Padre pitching tonight. This copyrighted telecast presented by the authority of the San Diego Padres and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Baron Ballsley out to offer advice and encouragement to Edwards. First and third, two outs here in the seventh. Nick Vincent back with the club. Pride of Ramona. Carl Crawford, he got the Dodgers on the board early. The second man up tonight against James Shields and hammered a deep home run to right field. Only his third of the year. He's had a Shortened season because of various injuries. Runners at the corners, two outs. Breaking ball for a strike. And Toronto lost and the Yankees won, so the Blue Jays lead shortened to just a half game. In the American League East. Yeah, those Yankees are hanging on. There goes the runner and no throw. <laughs> Rollins, who's stolen many a base in his terrific career, has another. He's not been quite so active in that regard this year. That's his 11th. But if memory serves me, he's well into the 200s in stolen bases. Two and one. Well, we've seen the curveball, the slider, and also the 95 mile an hour fastball from John Edwards. 
Yeah, we really shortchanged Rollins. Counting the 11 steals this year, he has 464 in his career. Well, he's had a fabulous career, obviously. All of those except one in a Philadelphia Phillies uniform. Last year became the hits leader for the Phillies. And a classy Mike Schmidt, who had the record to that date, goes out to first base and gives him a big hug and anoints him the Phillies hit leader. He's had a fabulous career. You know, Ed Borders on Hall of Fame consideration. Two and two. Ground ball to the second baseman. Pantenberg throws him out. Nothing for the Dodgers in the seventh. Stretch half for the seventh at Petco. And with Mike Bolsinger on the mound tonight was curveballs. First two starts, over 60% of those curveballs. And the Padres had to capitalize on that. Matt Kemp with the first one. And then Jed Jerko with an absolute bullet to left center. His second in two nights. Hitting that curveball. And that had to be on the minds of the Padres tonight against Bolsinger. Well, the workhorse veteran of the Dodgers, left-hander J.P. Howell, comes in here in the seventh inning. He worked an inning last night, gave up that monster home run by Jan Salarte into the third tier of the Western Metal Supply Company building. He'll face Will Myers, then a pinch hitter, Clint Barmas for Spangenberg. And the pitcher spot. Myers in his return to the ball club after missing almost three months. Has struck out and flight up. Shift on. Then Marmus in the on deck circle. So Garcia goes one inning and strikes out one. Retired the side in order. One and one. Well, J.P. Howell will look to get strike one and then try to expose you out of the strike zone. Last night with Salarte through that nice fastball, middle, middle in. And rifled it off the Western Metal Supply Company building. Skips that one in, two and one. Pedro Baez loosens in the Dodger bullpen. Saw him last night. John Edwards there talking with Balsley and worked an inning and a third. Powell, interesting background. He grew up in Sacramento, was the player of the year up there in our capital city. 
And then he went to USC for a year and transferred from Southern Cal to the University of Texas. A man of his own mind, he was drafted in the second round of the 2001 draft and didn't sign as a second round pick. The Braves had picked him that high and then eventually inked a contract as a first round pick of Tampa Bay. A useful left hander. Three and two to Myers. Sharply struck. Well, the swing of Will Myers and the timing aspects, he's out front of that ball. So I'm on the breaking ball earlier in the at bat, just hesitating at times. There's certain timing issues and aspects of your swing. And it will take time for him to get used to that, seeing pitches out of the hands of both left handers and right handers. And he gets him a change up. Saturday, MLB on Fox One report returns with another doubleheader filled with playoff implications as the Rays take on the Yankees. Followed by the NL wildcard leading Pirates battling the NL Central leading Cardinals. Coverage begins at 9.30 a.m. Pacific on Fox Sports 1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Two big games. Those are big part of our uh, triple header because we uh, have the Padres then at 5 o'clock here on Fox Sports San Diego. There's the AL East with Toronto leading by only a half game. Barmas for Spangenberg who flied out and struck out tonight. One out here in the seventh the Padres have two hits a two run homer by Kemp and a solo shot by Jed Jerko. The only base knocks big as they were. Oh and two to Barmas. Melvin Upton tripled last night as a pinch hitter. Well, the Dodgers started this series with their biggest lead of the season, six and a half ahead of San Francisco, and they started last night uh, 17 games above 500, actually 18, and now 17. Also, their best record against the, the season. And with the Giants losing, they have a chance to extend their lead to seven and a half. Don Mattingly in a delightful position of being able to work out his rotation as Barmas goes down swinging and Howell has struck out the two men that he has faced Myers and Barmas. And that'll bring up Melvin Upton. Well Dick we saw Melvin Upton last night as you alluded to earlier with the triple. He's made a nice adjustment. It doesn't have anything to do with his swing. If you watch the vision. Of Melvin Upton Jr. He has both eyes on the pitcher, the release point. He's made an adjustment with his head. Visually, at times, he looks like he was staring at second base area and seeing the release point by with one eye. And just changing that head position will do a lot of good things. And you've seen his average go up. Yeah, it's up to 242 now. He's got four doubles, four triples, five home runs. Looks at that curveball for a strike. Here's the triple to right center field. An absolute bullet to right center in a big situation and uh, just the momentum for the San Diego Padres last night. That added on to the 8 7 lead. Another curveball misses, 2 and 1. Brother Justin looks on.
It is interesting of uh, the head position as the batter because you you line up with home plate and then you turn your head and look at the pitcher and the, you hope your dominant eye is that front eye. Exactly. And and sometimes it isn't. So by turning your head just a little bit, let's say the right eye for Upton is the dominant eye. Well, always we've got that to focus. We've seen the young Corey Seager for the Los Angeles Dodgers third baseman tonight. That's what he does. And it's about the comfort level and being able visually to pick up that release point. But it's not always adjustments with your swing and manipulating your hands and getting that in the right position. Yes, that has to sync up with everything, but visually you have to be able to see the ball, see the location. Because you have a weakness at this big league level, they will expose it. And you will feel like you're lost. Yeah, that is that expression, see it, hit it. Well, if you don't see it, you ain't hitting it. In the dirt, full count. You know, so many times we talk about the mechanics of the swing, and you saw right there, seeing the ball out of the hands early and staying off of that pitch that looks like a strike and gets out of the strike zone. And really trying to eliminate your weaknesses but not showing your weakness by exposing yourself out of the strike zone. Strike three called, and Howell comes in and strikes out the side. Myers, Barmas, and Upton. Here's strike three. We go to the eighth. Five run lead, Dodgers. match that the Dodgers won. Yes, and that was a checkmate on that move right there. Switching over to Reggiano, pinch hitting because uh, the first pitch, second pitch of the inning in the hitter's count, bomb right here. Yeah, it looked like Ethier was going to face Zipchinski, and instead it was Justin Ruggiano, and Ruggiano would leave the yard. They had three home runs in the inning, and that's why it is an 8-3 to three ball game here in the top of the eighth inning as we welcome you back. Steve and I are working on Padres Live, the postgame show, which will be brought to you by Cox Communications. But in the meantime, special guest with a Sweetwater Valley Little League team. Had a little bit of a run there in Williamsport, boys. Great job. Congratulations. You guys have a lot of fun? Yeah, we had lots of fun meeting new people. It was really fun. Yeah? What do you think about the home runs there? Do we need to move the fences back? Uh, it's. I don't think we should move the fences back. It's good to hit more home runs for our team, and we hit the ball far. Yeah, you did hit the ball far. You gave all of us a great thrill. It was a ton of fun watching you guys play. Thank you guys so much for all you give into town. Hey, when we see you in the post-game show, guys, we're going to talk a little bit more about what happened with Sweetwater Valley. We're also going to hear from Pat Murphy, and we have Jay and Dan. They're inside pitch, so all that and more coming up after the final out. So, guys, thank you for joining us. Let's get it back up to the booth. Dick Enberg and Mark Sweeney. Gentlemen. All right, Mike. Great to see those young guys. We were all pulling for them. They had a good run at Williamsport. Just ran into that tough Texas team that yeah. beat them a couple of times. And congratulations to those young men, and they'll... Remember those memories that they created for many, many years, and hopefully we see them at this big league level. Yeah. Yeah, the chances are one of those kids is going to be a professional that might make it to the big leagues. Frank Garces gets Gonzalez to ground out to the second base side. 
And here's Chase Utley. Hit a solo homer his last time. And strike one. Barma stays in the game at shortstop, and Jerko goes over to second with Spanchenberg out. Here's the new faces in the lineup or new position. Spins the breaking ball just off the plate, one and one. Eight runs, nine hits for the Dodgers, but five of the nine home runs. Padres three runs, two hits, and their two hits home runs. 91 on the fastball, one and two. Sound like a broken record, but Frank Garces is his fourth stint in the major leagues this year. Sent down, and I think a lot of it has been commanding that outside part of the plate, both with the fastball and the slider, and also being able to throw that fastball into left handers. There's a good breaking ball that freezes Utley, strike three. Chris Hatcher getting ready for the Dodgers. For a while, Hatcher early the season was their closer. But uh, Kenley Jansen was injured at the time, and Jansen now is the, the big man in the bullpen, as he was last year. Seeger grounded out, struck out, knocked in a run with a ground out, and doubled the last time. So in two games, he's knocked in three runs. Well, Dick, like we talked about with Melvin Upton Jr., you see young Corey Seeger trying to put both eyes on that release point. A chow. Wicked line drive just beyond the dugout of the Dodgers, right into a crowd of Dodger fans. And the Padre fan comes out with it, and he also has a sore digit. <laughs> but he's got bragging rights against those LA folks. Yeah, just such a calm approach, and that's why when they had the comparisons of John Oluru, just a very quiet approach, a Wally Joyner style. But you can see him just working his vision, trying to pick up that release point. And that's the setup, and then he has a quiet approach and quick hands. Her ball hangs high, two and two. Two starters went five innings. James Shields for the Padres. Mark Mike Bolsinger for the Dodgers. Each gave up three runs. Each gave up well three hits for Bolsinger or for Shields. Two hits for Bolsinger, both home runs. Bullpen, much as was the case last night, figures in the decision making tonight. Padres pen uh, battered in that sixth inning, five runs scoring on three home runs. Whoa! Right past over the head of Garces for another base hit for Seager. He looks like the real deal. Two hits last night, two more tonight. Well, visually hanging in there and seeing that release point, seeing it longer. A simple approach and then handling left on left, and you can check that box. Just off the end of the bat, but staying in there against the lefty. Yes, yeah, Money Grandal 0 for 3 tonight, batting right handed. Maybe that'll get him out of his slump 0 for 30. Only two RBIs on the season. Right handed, no home runs. All of his 15 home runs are from the left side. But his average is better right handed, 319. Not as many chances. Two out, Seager at first.
Myers will take a look, but not a chance. Dodger box score with Rollins two hits and Sigur and Shebler two. The home runs Crawford, Gonzalez, Utley, Shebler, and the pinch hitter Ruggiano. One and two. Dodgers are going to lead the major leagues again in attendance. They're already near 3.2 million at home. Averaging 46,700 a game. Swing and a miss, and Grandol goes back mumbling again. Boy, rough times for Yasmani. Bottom of the eighth, eight to three, Dodgers. Brought to you by your San Diego Lexus dealer and by Petco. What we feed them matters. Bottom of the eighth inning here at Petco Park. Middle game, or actually the second game of a four game series. The Dodgers bring on Chris Hatcher to pitch in the eighth inning. And the Padres will counter with a pinch hitter. Brett Wallace will hit in the ninth spot. Chris Hatcher, excuse me, uh, fastball slider and split averages 96 on the fastball. Started uh, very effectively at the beginning of the season and is faded here in the latter half. He's two and five, his record, as you can see, four seven three, too high in that ERA. And right handers, surprisingly, hitting 304 against him. Wallace, who has been outstanding as the pinch hitter, takes ball one. 13 pinch hits for Wallace, 33 trips, a couple of home runs, overall hitting 350. And he drills that one to deep left center field. That's way back, and Wallace has hit another home run. Man, is he strong. The third hit of the night for the Padres, all home runs. A solo shot for Wallace. Number four. Well, what a weapon. Brett Wallace continues his hot streak off the bench and takes that first pitch fastball in and then gets this one out over the plate. 
That's a powerful approach and the big part of the building. Another 400 plus foot home run and Jan Salarte takes strike one. One official of that tonight he grounded out walked the other two times. Eight to four the Dodger lead cut to four. See if that ignites a Padre late rally again. Line drive base hit Salarte on base for the third time tonight. That'll bring up Jed Jerko. Well, the Padres finally have a hit that's not a home run. Well, you never know what one run will do and unlock the San Diego Padres. Happened last night in the bottom of the six, and then they went on to snatch a victory from the Dodgers. And Jerko, part of that story with a two run home run and an RBI single, he has a home run tonight, his 12th of the year. So lead off pinch homer Brett Wallace solid single Salarte. Rick Honeycutt on the horn. Just four hits Salarte single home runs Jerko and Kemp and Wallace. Ball in the dirt. And Baez up again. I don't know what it is about the Dodgers, but they bring out long games. It seems like every time you play the Dodgers, you're guaranteed more than three hours. Ground ball should be two. There's one. And a double play. Rollins start lay to Gonzalez. Six, four, three, and two gone now in the eighth inning. And as promised earlier in the game, we have tonight's T Mobile strongest fan photo. Tweet your photo using hashtag SD Data Strong Fan. A chance to be shown as we're doing now in an upcoming telecast brought to you by T Mobile. Thank you, Mandy. Padre fans right there. They're yeah. at the membership party. They got the, everything going in the fandom, even the backdrop. Two outs, and here's Matt Kemp. Kemp, a two run homer, a long out to center, and a slow roller to Gonzalez at first base the last time. They shift around, load up the left side. Gonzalez, the only dodger on the right side. Five at the knees, and that brings us to our Cholula flamethrower. Well, with Chris, Hat Chris Hatcher on the mound and 96 miles an hour, and he's a visitor, so that's hot sauce. I'm not going to look for a fish taco either. Yeah, you've got to cut back on those. Not going to do it. Swing and a miss, one and two. They're good, but I'm not going to do it. You know, you would think for all the publicity you've given those fish tacos all season long that just one time they'd bring some of those to the booth. Now, maybe you and Mike get them all the time. Probably out there you do, but never in, never anything up here. Yeah. Well, Pomeranz. <laughs> Blame it on that's, Pomeranz. That's why they call him Mikey. He likes it. Swing and a miss. 
That's it for the Padres in the eighth. Hatcher strikes out Kemp. We go to the ninth. Extra 1360 Fox Sports San Diego. But first, Padres POV. Justin Upton gets fitted for new golf clubs at the TaylorMade facility. I'm only hitting the ball this good because I haven't played in six months. <laughs> I know. As soon as I start thinking about my swing, it's going to be really, really ugly. We were able to join Justin Upton at TaylorMade where he just talked about his passion for golf. And it was, it was a lot of fun with him that day. Plus... We got to visit Randy Jones' home. He actually conducts pitching clinics in his backyard, guys. That's right. Our favorite Cy Young winner is passing on his pitching wisdom. And I, I just have to say my producer, Jacob Santos, and production assistant, Ryan Certain, did such a wonderful job of constructing these features for the episode. That's a good-looking swing Justin Upton has. Then you can uh, extra 1360, the cannons. Welcome Clark Judge. And behind the bolt. Inside into the Chargers, they're through the exhibition season, getting ready for game one against the Lions. Deep drive to left field, that's slicing foul. Yeah, that Taylor made facility is called the Kingdom for Justin Upton. Well, that was a nice, smooth golf swing. Yes, it was. I'd like to borrow that. Nick Vincent back from El Paso, his 14th game. Shebler Peterson in the, the number nine spot. Called that a strike. He did. Will Myers goes to center field. Brett Wallace stays in the game and at first base. The eight home runs hit tonight. Tie the record most home runs hit at Petco in a single game. Five by the Dodgers and three by the Padres. Shebler has one of them. First major league home run. He also has a sharp single and a couple of steals. And Kenley Jansen, even though it's a four run lead, hasn't had work for a while. He's going to pitch the ninth. 8 4 LA. Padres led 3-2 in the third on Jerko's home run. Swing and a miss. Off speed and Vincent has to strike out. Well, let's go back to the keys to the game with Mark Sweeney brought to you by your San Diego Honda dealers. Well, we talked about adding the thunder of Will Myers. And it was good to see him coming off the disabled list with that wrist injury. 0 for 3 tonight, but... Look for Will Myers to continue that and hopefully his wrist continues to get more and more healthy. But the Shields cools off the left handed power while home runs of Crawford and the other left handers. Shebler also home run. Hey, you can't hit them all. 
No, I wasn't good tonight. I Chuck. didn't want to ask for my grade. <laughs> well, we'll get Mark Grant on the line. Have him <laughs> give you your grade tonight. Speaking of Mark Grant, I'm sitting in for him. And uh, happy birthday to Larry Grant. Yeah, Dad, what a great father he is. Super guy. Apple doesn't fall far from the no. tree either, right? No. You can see why Mark is such a pleasant guy. Loves everybody and everyone loves him. No, Dick, a good friend of mine, Mike Antanasio, turned 50 tonight. It's Tony Antanasio, the agent of a lot of baseball players, the first base coach, Davey Lopes, tonight. But happy birthday, Mike. Two and one to Peterson. High behind home plate, back into the crowd. Austin Barnes on deck for the Dodgers. He'll be the fifth man to hit in that spot. Remember, Andre Ether came out to pinch hit in the sixth inning with a man on and one out, and uh, Mattingly pulled back Ether. And brought up Ruggiano. When uh, the Padres brought in the right handed or the left handed pitcher Zepchinski, and it paid off because Ruggiano hit the two run homer. Home run happy LA leading the National League with 162, five tonight. And Vincent walks Peterson with one out. Ninth walk from Padre pitching tonight. Austin Barnes, the batter. Another of the youngsters called up September 1st. Like one. Four for 16 is Barnes. Well, Jim Johnson is added to the Dodger bullpen along with Kenley Jansen, the closer. That's playable, but a long run for Jerko now at second base. He makes the play in foul territory for the second out. That was announced uh, Pat, last week that Ben Scully at age 88 will come back and call the action again next year to the delight of everyone who loves baseball. The poet laureate of our baseball broadcasters. He first called a game out of Fordham University in 1950. And there was the lineup for the Brooklyn Dodgers. How about that lineup? Hall of Famers, Snyder, Robinson, Campanella. Gil Hodges should have made it. Somehow or another, he just didn't get enough votes. Pee Wee Reese, Shotgun George Shuba, <laughs> Don Newcomb. And you get to rub shoulders if you're in a Dodger uniform with Don Newcomb, one of the princes of baseball. Leadoff hitter Rollins has been on base the last four times a couple of walks, a single, and a double. He scored two runs tonight. Popped up. Barmas on the left side. Squeezes the final out in the ninth. Padres will bring it up with Justin Upton leading off the bottom half of the inning.
the sixth inning and the plays are long balls. Home runs led the Dodgers three in that inning. Adrian Gonzalez with his home run. Ruggiano had led off a pinch hit two run homer and then uh, Utley measures one just long enough in right field. Three of the five home runs hit tonight are Bill Howe plays of the game. It brings on Kenley Jansen. 28 saves with the big right hander, a former catcher. Kenley Geronimo Jansen. Our last pitch Tuesday against San Francisco, earning that save with one inning of work. And 27 shy of the franchise record held by Eric Gagne. Where's number 74? His address in Curacao. Facing up to Norris and Myers. Jimmy Myrod, our outstanding statistician researcher, with a little lesson in history. Geronimo, the middle name of Kenley Jansen, given to him by his grandmother for inspiration. Geronimo, the Apache chief, was the last of the Native American warriors to surrender to the U.S. government. Mm. He fought for 30 years. And finally, uh, the Apaches, exhausted and hopelessly outnumbered, finally gave in in 1886. Geronimo, Geronimo, however, a man who fought for his rights to the very end. And that was the end of the Indian Wars in the Southwest. No extra charge. <laughs> it's interesting how history, you know, Modern history made the Native Americans the bad guys. Mm -hmm. We took the land away. By a long run out there for right fielder Shevler, but he's got plenty of time. Ball hit very high, and there's one away. Derek Norris, 0 for 3. Eight runs, ten hits for the Dodgers, five of them homers. Four runs, four hits for San Diego, three of them homers. That Kemp with a two run shot in the first inning. When headed toward the media level, right off the Jerry Coleman sign that celebrates the naming of the media center after the Colonel. Center field that'll chase Peterson back a few steps and he squeezes the second out. And Will Myers gets another chance returning to the big club after 70 games on the DL. He has struck out flight out and struck out. Well Will Myers moving forward and for the Padres just seeing how that wrist responds. And what they're going to do with him moving forward. You saw him play first base tonight, then move to center field. And where will he play moving forward? Very talented young man, and he's fought a lot of injuries the last couple of years. He seems to be very natural at first base, doesn't he, yeah. for someone who hasn't played that position much? Look at those hands. He's got his, probably the strongest hands in the clubhouse. Fact, uh, but Black in spring training kind of dared everyone in the media to shake hands with him. He said, "Be careful. He may come out of that grip with some pain." The strongest handshake he'd ever witnessed. Well, when you watch him swing the bat, especially in batting practice, the ball just jumps off his bat.
Strike three, and the ball game comes to an end. The Dodgers out homer the Padres, and they split the first two games of this series. The final LA 8, San Diego 4. Here's Mike Pomerantz. Well, Dick and Mark, thanks very much with Stephen. I see you on Padres Live, the post game show. You're going to hear from Pat Murphy on all the managerial chess game that was being played out there today. Also, how the expanded rosters played into what we saw tonight, and we'll have a preview of Padres POV.